Everybody knew that I was going to be doing a category tonight, so they. Oh no! Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I have something. Pl- I gotta go. I gotta go. I got, guys. I got a hurricane. <laughs> I got a hurricane coming through. I'm going <laughs> I think the power is going out right now. He's done good categories in the past. Just, I mean, how much worse than civil British it's civil war history can it be? Seventeenth century Welsh politicians. Don't challenge. Don't challenge, Caspian. Seventeenth <laughs> century left-handed Welsh Welsh politicians. Oh my God! And the lighthouses crazy. that they own. <laughs> <laughs> According to RogerEbert.com. <laughs> People are gonna go. You guys are nuts. Okay, so let me sign. Rob's going first, and then Kevin's going next. So I need to put Kevin in room two. This is how I've learned how to do this quickly. Leonard is third. Here comes Brandy. Somebody let her in, please. Um, yeah. Who's got power to let her in? I do. Uh, Everybody look at Rob's back. Kelly and, and Isabella have it. Right, no. Leonard. Yes. Oh, there you are. Night and Nine cars. You're going to room three. Caspian is going to room four. I don't suppose Mick West is joining us today, but if you haven't seen his takedown of the uh, pyramid UFO, oh, it's, it's just superb you interviewed him yesterday huh yeah he's going to be on the skeptic zone this week but it's it's just such a wonderful straightforward explanation of something it's, it's really good oh i don't i'm not recognizing that term when did this happen when you were on vacation probably. when you were on vacation yeah if you google pyramid ufo you'll find out more and or, or ufo mick west pyramid ufo mick oh, west. so this is a recent thing okay yeah yeah mm. yeah Okay, so the TV news here or TV show had a so-called expert from America just raving about how they're coming. It's a real UFO. The Navy admitted oh. it was yeah, the first released. the first thing I hit is a CNN story headline: Pentagon yep. confirms UFO video yep. is real. Um, yeah, they confirmed and, that the video is real. Yeah, not they confirmed that the video is real. Yeah, I know, I got that. <laughs> and so I wrote to the TV network to say, you know, you had this story on last week. Um, here's here's ha- what. The, the real story is behind it. You know, it's been debunked. Uh, I hope you'll now present this to your viewers. <laughs> and you heard right back from them, right? I heard right back from them, yeah. Well, there's two things against it. One, they don't like debunking UFOs and psychics because that's their bread and butter. And two, the story was on last week. Their audience doesn't have that long attention span. Yeah. All right. So the, some of the, the groups are about four person-ish four to five people each. I'm expecting more people who will be joining us. Hello, Brandy, by the way. Hi, Brandy. So I'm putting you in your rooms. I will send Brandy to um, one of these rooms where I know somebody's going to be leaving early. So that would be this one. All right. See you guys in a few minutes. And I will pause the video and then we can move. It's just too weird seeing you guys like that. My goodness, Kevin now? Now, Kevin? Yeah, I like this one here because I can. If I do it right, I can. I can. I can pick your nose on Mark's nose. You know. Like I think Richard this. Saunders is the <laughs> Mark. Hey, didn't you learn from Saturday Night Live? You can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you can't, you can't pick, pick your, your friends' friend nose. nose. Well, now you can with Zoom. Oh, you can go. Oh, really? One million dollars. One million dollars. Okay. The Dr. Evil. I can't get it right. Um, does anybody remember that TV uh, crime show that was a cop show that it was like had this really awesome music and then it would stop and go Shrek or something? What was that? Huh? Top Rock? No. <laughs> Art, it was like a Art really jazzy Art cop 54. show from the 90s or 80s. Um, Shaft, maybe? Shaft! Landing. That's it. Shaft! That one. <laughs> the father That's dead. the 70s. He's a bad mother. You watch your mouth. That's a long time. Shaft. That's way before the nineties. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Car, like car, 50, car fifty-four. Where are you? Yeah, that, that was, was one of Mark's favorite shows. They 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 had one where they went to go see a psychic. Oh my gosh, a gypsy psychic. You know, when one of those little shops. Back when we could say that, use the word gypsy. Was that your favorite episode, Susan? No, that was Mark's. He was. Oh, he's. I think he showed it to me like four times. Mm-hmm. It's hilarious. <laughs> definitely not politically correct definitely not but it was funny as that 
Isabel, are you shoving food down your gullet? Is that why you can't see? There's Karen. Hi, Karen. Karen, she's fully vaccinated because she had the J and J. We're gonna get the J and J out there. <laughs> Where did you call that? Yeah, but she had it done before then. Ah. So that's why she's fully vaccinated. Actually, they just reinstated it. Did they? Oh, yeah. did they? Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's really good. We need that. Just Where? gonna have a warning, a warning on it. If Jamie Where goes and they, gets that done, it, it, be, it's being done, be done state by casting. state. So what state reinstated it? I was watching ABC News and I thought I, just a half hour ago, I thought that's what I heard them say. Or maybe they said they said they were going to do it tomorrow. Tomorrow is when they're meeting, I think. I think What's tomorrow that? they're meeting. To talk about the J&J &J reinstating it. You you may be correct. You, you know what I heard the other that. day? I, I heard from somebody the other day that uh, it was from a doctor. In, I think it's in Kansas that they said they're now winding down that they've got a whole bunch of uh, vaccines left over that everybody who's wanted to get vaccine has gotten vaccine. 35%. Wow. Great. Can you, um, yeah. I attended a board of supervisor meeting in Monterey County and was shocked to find out that our sheriff's department, 40% of the sheriffs declined. Wow. That's scary. They are having close personal contact with people. And they it have, doesn't surprise me. They're in the demographic that's most likely to decline. Yeah. They're not really concerned about public safety. Yeah. Right. Wow. That's crazy. That's method scary. That I think in LA, I want to say it was somewhere in California. Um, they wanted to get firefighters vaccinated before wildfires set in. And so they made it, they didn't make it mandatory, but they required that if the firefighters wanted to decline the vaccine, they had to come do it in person at the vaccination center. That way, like it couldn't be an issue <laughs> of, like convenience or, and like, there's that like peer pressure mentality. <laughs> Um, so they could decline it, but they had to come in person and like go to the wow. vaccine center anyway. So they might as well just get it. Well, that's interesting. That's cool. That's a good did, idea. Did it help? You know what I heard? Mm -hmm. You know what I heard? Sheep. I heard? Sheep. Sheep. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> that's really funny, Susan. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did everybody? Oh, this is so funny. <laughs> did everybody uh, catch up with the fact that the Martian helicopter took off again and flew for longer? Yeah. Than no, I didn't yeah. Catch that. yeah. Oh, good. How long did it fly? Um, just short of a minute. The, yeah, just yeah, just short of a oh, minute. The, diff did the it difference just go up did, and down, did, or did no? It the difference was it pivoted and went sideways, and then yeah, it went did a little bit of a dance up there and came back down again. Yep. Yeah, it went uh, five meters instead of three went uh, two meters laterally and spun into a couple of different orientations. I have got to see Paula's picture up close. How do I make her? I'm going to sing something, Paula. <laughs> something, 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 uh, something. I, I want to see something. it bigger. How do I make it? You probably oh. have to it's a combination of two memes. It's one yeah. of my, I love this picture. You probably have something, 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 Oh, oh, oh. Video on. You've got a, a different cat. Yeah. And then there's a Well, lady. that's a well-known internet. Cat. What's the yeah. cat from? That's the mean cat and the uh, scene from Shining. What's the mean cat? I but don't that's not it. the scene from Shining. Who, who is the woman? The, this cat is in a meme with two women, the blonde woman and a brunette woman. It's Yeah, it's from the it's from a Real Housewives of uh, Orange County episode. Hmm. And why is she screaming because somebody's trying to get in her door? And they no, it's to do... It, it's Susan, I can't explain this meme to you. <laughs> it was to do with one of them who was like complaining that the other one like stepped on their lawn and heels and it was something really really Isabella stupid. you wait know way too much stuff about stuff I have a, I've had a lot of time on my hands the whole thing was I, accidental no way no well, let's way. see let's see how much Isabella knows about this category okay well first we're gonna oh. do our themes so Deborah James Kyle Mike and Rob who are you tonight we are n slash a not applicable. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> we couldn't come up with a good name. <laughs> okay, not applicable. Don't sue us. Non applicable. All right. So, Kevin, Avi, Brandy, Isabella, and Carl, who are you tonight? We, in, in honor of Ted Nugent contracting a disease that he denies exists, <laughs> we're Schrodinger's cat scratch fever. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Too bad it wasn't chicken pox where he really would be scratching, right? Okay. Nobody got that but me? We got it. I got it. We got I never it. got chicken pox. Mm -hmm. We're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We gave it the appropriate amount of laughter. <laughs> I think it's funny. Okay. <laughs> Brian and Terry, Karen, Kelly, and Leonard, who are you guys? Earth Day finally joins AARP. <laughs> Oh, that, okay. That makes sense. Oh, you're not writing in there. RTA. Okay. And group number four, Jamie, Caspian, Janine, Mono, Paula, and Romero. We are the Weeping Angel Food Cake. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Serious food cake. The Why scariest not? angel food cake of them all. I mean, I should have I had, Doctor Who. I, would, I made an angel food cake today with because we have so many eggs. Well, and so I was on WhatsApp, WhatsApp with my girlfriend from Turkey while I was cooking. And as we're talking, she, she goes, we're having an earthquake. And my power went out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a so powerful that's kind of funny. It was really weird. Okay. I someday I want to sit in and listen to you guys make team names because I don't know where in the heck how you Alan, <laughs> Jeff, Julie, Peggy, and Saunders. That's a mystery I've never been able, I, I've not been involved in. We don't know either. Is that your name? <laughs> we don't know either. No, no, no. That, that we don't we don't know how the <laughs> the names come out either. Oh. Alan? Uh, yeah, yeah, the name of it. So our, our team name is Pyramid UFOs for five year olds. <laughs> that, that seems to fit. Okay, Paula sent me the meme. Thank you. Put it in the. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right. So at least I can pronounce these things. We have non applicable playing against. Hold on a second. Schrodinger's. Wait, 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 I've got to, I'm trying to copy this darn thing and it's not copying. Okay, non-applicable, applicable against uh, Schrodinger's cat scratch fever. Cat scratch fever. Earth Day finally joins AARP against Weeping Angel Food Cake. Who is against Pyramid UFOs for five-year-olds? That sounds like a, like a Jeopardy category. Are you converting uh, have... trivia into some kind of bracket? <laughs> <laughs> could I have uh, pyramid UFOs for five girls for a hundred, please? Oh, that's good. <laughs> Sorry, 400. 400. Susan, we should do a Jeopardy style of trivia. Oh, I don't know if I could do that. Oh, uh, yeah, you have to empl uh, employ um, our friend um, who does the Jeopardy at the stage. William. Um, not yeah. William. Uh, um, Bill Patterson. Yeah, Bill. Oh. Yeah, oh. William. Yes. Bill I Patterson, can, yeah. yeah. Well, yes, of course, yes. be, that actually is going to be happening, but I can't talk about it. So, huh. but it won't be till October. October. Yeah. October. I might not be here in October. Well, you can. It's, it's going to be virtual. It's uh, virtual yeah. on. It's going to be on the computer. So you're okay. Right. And it'll they're not here now. And it's a weekend. Good point. Where is here? Go out here? the door. You do not have to have me help you. Is that Hamilton? Yes. Ah. Uh, Hamilton, you've got a fan and you don't even know it. I don't even, I don't know why I have such an obsession over your cat. I just do. Mark, Mark just loves him to pieces. He, he told me just yes today. He says he is just the sweetest cat. He just <laughs> loves him. He sleeps with Mark and like, gets on his shoulder and he says he would kill you vibration. if he was bigger than you. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, All cats would okay, kill you if they were bigger than you. They would play the with you, toss you around, rip you up. Susan, tell Hamilton I love him. Hamilton, she loves you. She wants to marry you. All right. Okay, here we go. Memes. These are weird. Oh, okay. I've never seen either of these memes. I am behind on my memes, Paula. It, it's fun to watch the definition of the word meme evolve. <laughs> oh, that yes. makes sense. Get it? Memes evolve. Paula, when are you coming up here? Well, I don't know. I'm working pretty full time. I'm working six days a week currently. Yeah, I know. Wow. That's why I said, who knows? Okay. 
All right. So the first person up tonight is the Gator man himself who went and had a nice long talk with Matt Gates. So this should be really interesting. He was staying right next door from what I understand. I hear he's a nice guy when you get to know him. And try to, why didn't you lure him into the pond behind you? That would have been better. So Mr. Flat, Bob Palmer, flat earth straight, him. straight from Venice, Florida, where I hear the storms and gators are, are fun. And unpredictable. Unpredictable. Don't turn your back on the pond. That, I, I don't think I could sleep at night knowing, I, I think every day I would feel like I was living on a house with a cliff. And that somebody's going to go sleepwalking or walk out there or. Yeah, there's a 10 foot climb up a, a very small incline to the to the screened in. Um, I, I guess you call it lanai with a pool in it. And they said, oh, don't worry. A, you know, a grown man can throw himself against that screen and it won't rip. I said, he doesn't have six inch teeth. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> Oh my God! Even still, I wouldn't be worried about it getting well, in the I'd just be gator worried about a man against that screen, there. and he won't be able to get away. I can, there's no way I can raise my hands <laughs> out there. No, no way. I'd freak Okay, out. ready for the category? Has anyone guessed it? And because it's Earth Day, by the way, and this Black is the shirt, Earth Day. shirt I'm wearing. Oh um, no! Round Earth. Round Earth. Earth. Which is a, round Earth. Round Earth. Did you wear that in Florida? I did not. Oh, that would have been really good. All right, yeah, so we're doing flat earth. Woohoo, that sounds like it'd be fun. Who's going to mute us? Muting everybody in three, two, one. Okay, so we shall see. You can hear me, right? Give me thumbs up. Yes. Okay, we shall see how well you know your flat earth um, theories and history. Hmm. Question number one. Modern flat earth belief originated with the, this author, born in 1816, who published a pamphlet titled Zetetic Astronomy. They later expanded this into the book, Earth, Not a Globe, proposing that the Earth is a flat disk centered at the North Pole and bounded along its Southern edge by a wall of ice. Who was the author? Was it Alfred Russell Wallace, Elizabeth Blatton, Robert Henderson, Samuel Rabotham, or Samuel Shenton? These are in alphabetical order. All of my uh, multiple choices, I think about half of these are multiple choices because I have pity on you people. Um, after playing without multiple choices from some categories, well, I won't mention any names. <coughs> Caspian. The International Flat Earth Research Society was started in Dover, England in 1956. During the space race, its founder was frequently seen in the media promoting flat earth. Who was its founder? And interestingly enough, we have the same Names in the multiple choice. Question number three. This person died on February 22nd, 2020, while filming a stunt for the Science Channel television series, ostensibly to prove the earth is flat. Following his death, his public relations representative stated, we used flat earth as a PR stunt. Flat earth allowed us to get so much publicity that we just kept going. I know he did not believe in flat earth and it was a shtick. Question number four, an excerpt from Psalm 19.1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork is on the headstone of someone closely associated with manned spaceflight, something which flat earth believers believe did not occur. This post-mortem admission is one of the many clues flat earthers say points to a flat earth. Whose headstone am I talking about here? Question number five, a common flat earth belief is that there is no such thing as gravity. So how do they explain the force pulling things downward towards the earth? Not multiple choice. Question number six, in 2018, Netflix released a documentary behind the curve about flat earth believers. Reviews describe the film as hilarious, informative, but pressing and empathetic, with several commentators praising its humanistic look at some of the most ridiculed people in America. What does the film's Spanish language name translate into English? Is it as flat as an encephalogram, behind the curve, flat out wrong, or the earth is flat?
Question number seven. Early in 2015, a professional computer gamer released a YouTube video series, which delves into the possibility of a human civilization, of our human civilization, being inside in a closed system on a flat plane. By some accounts, this video series was the spark for the resurgence of the belief in flat earth in modern times. In 2016, a book of the same name was released. What is the name? Destroying Globe Earth Lies, Earth is Not a Sphere, Flat Earth Clues, Proving Flat Earth, or What Are They Hiding? Question number eight. Name the creator of the video series I just mentioned, who is also featured in the documentary Behind the Curve. Question number nine. There's a song titled Flatline, which claims the earth is flat and lashes out at Neil deGrasse Tyson. The song draws from a collection of conspiracy theories, including globalism, reptilians, and anti-Semitism. In 2016, the rapper who performed it tweeted the following. A lot of people are turned off by the phrase flat earth, but there's no way you can see all the evidence and not know it. Grow up. Who is this rapper? B.O.B., Drake, Eminem, Kanye West, or Will I Am? And the final question. This investigator of all things fringe, including topics like Scientology mediums and even urophagia, which is the drinking of one's own urine for health reasons, participated in testing the shape of the earth at the Salton Sea with a group of flat earthers. He was quoted in Skeptical Inquirer as saying, I feel like belief in flat earth is even more dangerous than say Scientology because its reach right now is huge. It's tied to so many other unscientific beliefs and it's a mindset that is closed to any kind of disconfirmation. Good luck, everybody. Any questions? Those look terrific. I'm really sad there was no question about Pac-Man Earth. I think anybody that drinks their own urine is obviously like not in the right state of mind. Wait, you yeah. don't drink your own so urine? Which, which, no, ones are multiple, which ones are multiple choice, Rob? A uh, bunch of them. Multiple choice ones. So, so one, yeah, yeah. two is three multiple choice. Three is three. Three. three what's three? Three no. is not multiple choice. Three is not multiple. Only, ones, okay. only the ones that have multiple choices are multiple right. choice. Are you, are you sure you don't want to make three multiple choice? I would <laughs> know it if I saw it. No, that's a, it. that's a recent one. You guys, somebody should know that one. And I won't I mean, say will. Five out of ten is a decent amount of multiple choice. Yeah. I'm just All trying right. to copy these really quick before we go into the room. Okay, nobody else has any other questions? When it's multiple choice, it doesn't always show up on the, I try to copy it into these cells that I have on my spreadsheet. It wants to, it doesn't wanna include them and puts them on separate lines. So I have to stop and do it. And it's like, you know, annoying. All right, so let's all go to our rooms and see, I'll, be, I'll meet you guys over there at N slash A. You're not going, Karen? It does not let you go? I have I have a tip for you to make your life easier in that regard, if you would like. Oh, sure, what is it? When you cut and paste, instead of putting it into the cell, there's a bar above, um, I don't know what it's called, not the address bar, but the bar above at the top uh -huh. of the graph. Uh -huh. You cut and paste it in there, the entirety of the cut and paste will be in the cell. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Well, will it go in, um, what I'm also trying to do is make it so it goes into one thin cell without trying to expand. Oh, you might have to come over and show me. Well, let me try it. Let me try it. I'm okay. do it on 10. All right, bye. Oh, See you a little bit. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. She's great. Isn't she great? Okay, here we go. I need to go to my breakout room, which is this one right here. Here we go, people. All Hi, everybody. Hello. Hey, Susan. It's me, Joe. 
Hey, Susan, we saw that movie. I was wondering where you were, Joe. You remember all these answers. Uh, let me let me try. I was just copying them. I wasn't really reading them. Did, it, hey, did you guys have some of these? Who, who is Joe? Joe is the person who's going to be attending the uh, psychic event. Okay. Author and publisher. Hmm. Okay, I think this is Wallace. Number one? I think so, yeah. Okay. I mean, I Any objections? Supposedly the Earth right. is nope. a flat Earth just at the North Pole. Um, International Flat Earth Research Society is starting to over... Oh, wait, 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 let me see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the first one might be Alfred Russell Wallace. Maybe that just sounds familiar because it's a Wallace, isn't he the guy that did the DNA stuff? No. That's mm -hmm. Watson and Crick, maybe? Yeah. Who's yeah. the one who did um, with Darwin? Was Darwin was... Darwin's bulldog? No, the guy who was doing Darwin wrote to Darwin and said... They're writing hey. back and forth. Yeah, and, he's, and Darwin realized the guy was about to... Um, Publish, yeah. Yeah, something along the same lines. Was that, wasn't that Wallace? I think right. you might be right. So that would be but Alfred it might not Lloyd be the Wallace same Wallace. To mind. Yeah. But that might be why the name stands out for me. I know it's not Samuel Shelton or it wasn't a woman. Was it? Let me think. Okay, let me go to the second one. F E. Flat Earth. Oh. Who is the founder of it now? Um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing sounds familiar except Wallace again. Yeah, but he can't be in both of them because first of all, he can be yeah, way too old. Elizabeth oh, Blount doesn't sound like it was a woman. I thought it was a man who, let me think. Okay. Somebody, okay, this person died. This is Mike, um, Mike. Mad Mike Hughes. Mad Mike Hughes, yeah, Hughes, that's right. Um, the heavens declare the glory of God. So number four, could that be Neil Armstrong? No, he's an atheist. Hmm? So it doesn't preclude him from having a psalm on his tombstone. It, yeah, good point. But um, so could I, it be um, it's some sort of astronaut? Or or could it be Einstein or somebody like no? The no. associated with the space program, man's space flight. It doesn't have to be in the U.S. either. Or an oh, yeah, could be Von flight. Braun, right? Could be. But he was, I don't think he was. It, it doesn't even have to be an astronaut. Yeah. Yeah, but Flat Earthers put this as a clue. So it would have had to be someone who, it sounds like it would have been someone who would have seen the Earth as round from space. Yeah, I remember there was a, somebody that was like that, and it was very surprising, but I don't remember who it was. You're right. Hubble? Hubble's way too old, right? Yeah. I was thinking somebody who has a telescope, famous for a telescope. Carl Sagan? No, wouldn't have done that. Wouldn't have been John Glenn, probably. <laughs> yeah. Could be. Could be. I don't know. He was a senator or something from Ohio forever. Right. I don't know that he would have gotten. <laughs> that would have been surprising, I guess. I mean, I a know. lot of people who are not even particularly religious might have, you know, a psalm. Yeah, it's kind right. of a pretty thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Also, you you don't necessarily control what goes on your head, so it could have been his. Uh, yeah. Could have had a religious. Yeah, you guys better be religion. after Caspian and Sterling whenever it's my turn. And and it's it's the followers that were using it as evidence. It, yeah. not necessarily. And that statement doesn't give any evidence. So right. I don't know. How about five? Acceleration. Acceleration. That it's going that fast that it's doing yeah. that. They believe, yeah, that it's uh, an accelerating disc moving through space, and that acceleration. Okay. Are we going in a loop or something? Or are we just going to keep going in a straight line and there's no, or are we just kind of going around in a loop? <laughs> I mean, I could try and talk you into it, uh, but 
<laughs> no, we don't have time. Otherwise, if you don't have I, a better I, answer. Acceleration sounds fine. Yeah, that sounds right. perfect. In 2018 release of document. We wrote this Wikipedia page. We wrote it behind the curve. Reviews describe the film as being okay. That's awful. What does the film's Spanish language name translate into? So behind I'm, the curve would be de de atrás de. I don't know how to say curve. De atrás de curve. So from coming from behind, I don't know how you would, this is I don't understand why it would just be, wouldn't we're the Spanish gonna... language name just be? Well, no, like, you know, like how you hear sometimes in trivia kind of, it's like, yes, the in different countries, they translate the names of movies differently. Right. Sometimes like there's an idiom, like, like behind the curve doesn't necessarily mean anything in France like it does in right. English or in, in Spanish rather. So they probably had some other idiom type. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I doubt it would be behind the curve. That's just why would you why would you even come up with a question if the answer was behind the curve? So yeah. maybe it's like the earth is flat or flat out wrong. Number A seems really strange. Yeah, I'm not I'm gonna say no on A. <laughs> I think it just made, made that one up. <laughs> yeah. Although the kind of thing, it, I mean, it could be that that's an, a Spanish idiom that encephalogram. Like, <laughs> encephalogram, that's like a brainwave scan. So it, yeah. right. although oh, encephalograms you know, are not flat unless you're dead. But I don't think they would. <laughs> that would be an idiom in an idiom. Probably. I guess so. the only way that would connect is is that it's probably based on partially on Latin, and so is Spanish. But mm -hmm. how about I, I don't I don't have a particular I mean I'd say C or D, but yeah, flat out wrong seems but C seems more like that might be an idiom in Spanish. So yeah, I kind of flat is kind of boring. I was kind of leaning towards C. Me too. All right, I'm gonna write down C. Okay. Number seven. Which was the last one? Don't know. YouTube videos. Felton talks about human color the inside of the closet. Okay. Number eight. The resurgence of belief in flat earth in modern times. Was that, it, what are, what are they been around? Has it ever gone away? <laughs> oh. Well, it's gotten popular recently. Maybe it's what are they hiding? I don't know. Oh, they're all called that. <laughs> e? And it wouldn't be flat Earth because isn't this about a hollow Earth? Um, no, no, it's not hollow Earth. Human inside a closed system. Okay. Hmm. I'm kind of leaning towards C on this one too, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm more on E, but I, I don't feel strongly about it. But you know, that could be the title of every pseudoscientific book, or, right? Yeah, or video. I guess. Well, they usually say they add. What your doctor doesn't want you to know because yeah. they're hiding something. <laughs> yeah. What your scientists scientists don't want you to know because they're hiding something. They're making you know, money. The right. Mention, right. Who is also be featured in the documentary Behind the Curve? Who was it? A professional computer games player. Thank you. That was in behind beyond the. A professional computer games player. So wait, are we still on seven? Yeah. yeah, but six, but eight is part of seven. Is like partly Related. seven. Related. Computer games. That was video series. That's a video series, wasn't it? Um, I remember the guy. He was really bizarre and not all there. And there was a woman sitting in the background every time they showed him, and she every time she was like this on her phone. Yeah. She was always sitting in the background, never said anything, never looked up at the camera, but she was always in the background on her phone. And the I don't know what the guy's name is. Somebody said, if there was a multiple choice, I might know. Okay, so player. Joshua, Steven, something like that. The spec score is gonna be very low. So you could have had me, Susan. I could have had you what? Do my my category. Oh, here comes um I gotta put um I gotta put let's let's I'll be right back because I gotta come over to um yeah help Brian. Have strong feelings for seven. Hey guys, I just saw that you were sitting here. Sorry, I hope you weren't waiting long. 
Um, the, the category is flat earth. So I know you're dying to get in there. Uh, Brian, you're gonna have, you're going to go to, um, I need to put you in the room because you are, you're doing bonus tonight. You know that, Brian? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So you're in pyramid UFOs for five-year-olds. Nice. And Dave, you're going to go, are you there, Dave? Yep. Okay. You're going to go in Schrodinger's cat scratch fever. Have fun. Okay, and I need to go back to my room. Where'd you go, Susan? So he okay. went to that uh, that the demonstration. Frost did. So we've got. I don't know that for sure, but uh, he investigated all of those things, and I can't know that many Europhagists. Okay, what so. what are, what are we saying? Which question? Ten. Uh, Number not ten. Number ten. ten? Rob's Flocksper. No, Ross Blotcher. <laughs> no, isn't it uh, the investigator of all things from Miss Jim Underdown? Has Jim ever drank his own pee in an Oh, then this would be Ross Blotcher. Yeah, I know he did Scientology. So let's let's move yeah, back. Yeah, it's Ross Blotcher. I was two. thinking it was uh, uh two. And what did we put for number nine? Um, B O B. B O B. Kyle, Kyle yeah. was pretty sure that it's B O B. I think uh, that seems right. I, that's the problem with this category. Everything seems kind of, sort of, kind of. You think you know well, what? What'd you put for eight? We don't know. Eight. We got nothing. Put Steve. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> spell, it, spell it however you want. And what'd you put for for? Wait, how do you spell Steve's last name? Yeah, yeah. N A. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how about seven? Would you put D? Proving flat Earth. Let's hope it's not. This isn't a new Punch and Judy. I don't want anything to beat Punch and Judy. <laughs> I, I, I'm ten, I have tender feelings about Punch and Judy now. <laughs> that is not lighthouses. One and two. That like was one we have A. So two. I think if you put two, I think it's got to be one of the Samuels. Hmm. Okay. Samuel Robotham. I've never heard of either of them, but watch it'll be the first one that sounded familiar. I don't know. I mean, again, we're just throwing a dart. Oh. So, I robot, didn't think robot, it was a woman, though. What? I didn't think it was that woman. It robot seems like it was a, like a very husband and wife. Thing. Anyone? Anything? No, go with D. D. All right. So, I got to recap one A, two D, three Mad Mike Hughes. Actually, we don't have anything for four either. Right. We think it's some sort of astronaut. Right. Go with the first one we said. Who's that? The first one we said, you guys said, oh, but he's an atheist. And we said, well. Neil Armstrong? Yeah, I mean, it kind of fits, sort of. Anyone anyone opposed to Neil Armstrong for four? It's OK with me. I don't know. Who's your sweet little boy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> OK, so back to. The only one we don't have an answer. One A, two D, three Mad Mike Hughes, four Neil Armstrong, five Acceleration, six C, seven D, eight Steve Yeren. <laughs> it's spelled Y E R E N. How are you? Put, put every a, letter of the alphabet in it, and then maybe we'll and have it. Ten Ross Blotcher. Okay, sounds good. So did so did a Mad Mike Mad Mike Hughes. Did his mom name him Mad Mike? Mad? Did she name him? Short for probably had lots of tantrums. She said, Madison. "Hey, Mad." I would have gone Mad. by M period Mike myself. Yeah. All right. So we're ready. I think Susan, we're going to get. By the way, hmm? I've got I've got a I've got a possible for a future week. I've got a possible bonus question if you need. Oh yeah, I do actually. I have. Um, 
The next week, I don't have a bonus. You want it? Okay, you can pencil me in. Okay, well, I'm typing you in. Okay. <laughs> Deborah, that's the week you're giving one too. Yeah, it's already. Yeah, as long as I don't have jury duty, I might have jury duty. Did you hear that? He said, "Well, I think it's great. You can go up and see um, Jay and Leonard if you if you get have to go up there. Only if they let me stay overnight in their house. Leonard, Leonard would. <laughs> Jay actually has a room too. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, why not? Be like a giant slumber party." Who's your good boy? Who's your good boy? Yes. Are you my, my good boy? Oh, we're first back. Do we get extra points? I wish. So when people start coming back, say, oh my God, I, I was thought my computer broke or something. No one else. We were here so long alone. So where is everybody else? Rob is in the wrong room. Kyle's still in our room, all by himself. Okay, he's closing it now. Let me put Rob, I can't move now. Cat scratch fever, doo -doo -doo -doo. cat scratch fever, even throated her cat scratch fever. You didn't get your COVID, you're a smart kitty, huh? He wears a mask. Oh, you're a good boy. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. Cats or something else. Oh, look at Deborah's kitty. Hello, Deborah's kitty, kitty. Meow, meow. Susan, can meow, I meow, see meow. Hamilton? Here, Ham. Can you talk to Deborah's kitty? Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> look at his Hi, eyes. He looks terrified. Hi. Look, there's, there's Hi. your biggest fan. Hi. Look at your Hi. biggest Hi. fan. <laughs> Hi, Hamilton. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Oh, Hamilton, you got a <laughs> number one fan on them. And look at you're not even looking at her. Hi, Hamilton. Whatever. Deborah's cat seems more engaged. Yeah. Oh, just, I gotta remember to put you in your room. <laughs> Remind me to put you in your real room next time, Rob. We were evicted. He didn't get into the last room at the last. Time. Yeah, I know. I keep making that mistake. Once you hit, once I send the signal to call everyone back, it will not let me change rooms. Anymore. Yeah, I couldn't do it either. I said, oh, I just about to hit the button to push you over there and it didn't go. Boy, it's hot, Ham. It's hot. It's hot. Cap scratch Hi, fever, you know. All right, Hi, Robert. Those are good. Sort we'll of. Say I'm assuming everyone got tens because how could anyone not know? Don't say that. Every time, man. <laughs> I'm joking. But I, I would guess that you guys, my, my guess is an average of a seven. That's what I'm going to say. Okay, let's see. I think I'm thinking more along the line of four. <laughs> what? Four or five. Wow. Yeah. Did, did you screw up, did you screw up my team? choices, so maybe five. Joe's iPhone, did you screw up my team? Did, did you do that again? She always cat would wave to you, Deborah. But yeah, you you sleeping. you guys got to remember, I'm going on your team, so you better. I know. Play right, because otherwise, oh. I'm what? No, okay. we aced this. We aced this. We got Brian. Oh, he. Oh my gosh, yeah. He knew him at the uh, last minute. He got there and said, got "I've been it. playing long enough for everybody to know what that means." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready for the answers? Yeah. yeah. So number one. Um, the whole um, modern flat earth belief originated with this fellow. So I just eliminated B uh, in 1816, and it was Samuel Rabotham. So thank him for this. Thanks, Sam. Yay! Uh, yeah. I, I have a request. It, I have a request that you say the letter with the with the name, please. Do uh, you write the letters? It's a D, as in dog. You sure it wasn't C? I'm Thank sure it wasn't you. C. I think it was A. So those other people are famous people. I, I hope you know who Alfred Russell Wallace was. Well, I yeah. did. I said, isn't he yeah. the guy that it was, was almost the DNA, um, the guy who was with I'm, Darwin? Darwin's a yeah. bulldog. I wrote yeah. an essay about that, too. Was it bulldog? I know. Was it no, he was, not, he was not Darwin's as bulldog. As he was not oh, Darwin's am bulldog. I, am I misremembering that? Cow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was the guy oh, who was almost going to publish. He was oh, Darwin. all right, the competitor. Okay. Well, I sent his stuff to Darwin to help to have Darwin help him get it published. 
Yeah. Okay. I, I remember uh, an Elizabeth Blount, but she was a mistress of Henry VIII, so I didn't think that was. <laughs> doesn't sound right. Betty Blount? Didn't she have one of his kids? Yeah, uh, Hen, uh, Fitzroy, and then, but he had died, unfortunately. Yeah. So, so they're, all, they're all dead by now. She wrote it. Hi, Hamilton. They're all dead by now. They're all dead by now is a true statement. Uh, number two. So um, this is the after it was dying a death. It was revived in 1956. And uh, the, during the space race, this person actually went on television a lot to promote it. And it uh, took off a little bit then. And uh, this is another Samuel. So apparently that's a good name for Flat Earth. Samuel Shenton, which is E. Yay. Yay. <clears throat> Boo. <laughs> Question number three. This was from only a year ago. So I, and it was in the news all the time. So I hope you all got mad Mike Hughes. Yeah, yeah. Didn't think that needed a multiple choice. Um, and it was interesting because he is portrayed in another documentary on Netflix called, I think, Rocket Man, not the Elton John one, but another one. And it was before he died. So it was just the first launch was covered, but it presented it like it was for real. They, I heard some conversations about flat earthers believe all the other conspiracy theories. And that was obvious watching this because he and his agents and everyone were going on and on about everything. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, is Mad Mike by itself enough, or do you need the last name? Yeah, anymore? that's fine. He was called Mad Mike a lot. In fact, there was a Wikipedia argument that that should be the official name of his uh, of his page, but it's not. It's Mike Hughes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the interesting thing about the uh, the headstone was it was the flat earthers have used this just because he was a religious person and I guess wanted it on his headstone, and that was his instructions and his will. Um, and it was Werner von Braun. Yeah. Oh, didn't oh, we wow. almost guess that? We did almost. We almost so, got it. So, so because he was in charge of the uh, Apollo rocket design, they said, "Oh, this is clearly means you know he he was in on the flat Earth." You're writing these in the chat, right? So I can just copy them over and put them onto the. I'll do that all at once later for you. Okay. Um, so a common flat Earth belief is there's no such thing as gravity. Does everyone know uh, why we have something pulling us to the Earth if there's no gravity? Acceleration. The Earth sucks. <laughs> no. I will not accept that down. answer. I will the not Earth's accept the Earth sucks. Up to us. <laughs> so yeah, yes, the Earth flow. is accelerating at one g perpendicular to the flat plane. I don't wow. know how you, you get past not going past the uh, the speed limit of uh, speed of light, but it's somehow. relative relativistic. The I guess the, so. The apparent mass of the Earth increases. I yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so in um, 2018. I hope everyone saw this documentary because it really was fantastic. Um, and uh, Paula Serrano, actually, we had this conversation about Flat Earth because she's a, a, you know, interested in the subject. And she said, oh, funny. In Spanish, it's called Tan Plana Como Un Encephalograma. No. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Which means brain dead. <laughs> oh, man. What letter is that? I, I couldn't figure out where you were. That's A, as flat as an encephalogram, which is a clever thing, meaning your brain dead. Wow. <laughs> Did anyone get that? That was the only uh, one. I assume Spanish it. people understood it, yeah. Wait, I have a question. <laughs> yeah, very good guy. If the Earth is flat, then how do they explain, like, the, the uh, I guess, like, the solstices? Like, I, well, they'll have a way. We're not explaining what they think. <laughs> they can, I, I just thought Isabella. of that. I'm like, does the Earth spin, or does it just like? No, the the sun uh, sunlight comes out like a spotlight. Oh, okay. And and the and those and the sun moves around. Oh, okay. It, it also depends who you ask, because there's yeah. actually different yeah. different flat Earth models. Okay. So, so, so Isabel, you, you, you yeah. can watch. You can watch the answer that's in the next question, and it will tell you what they believe. It's a whole long series. So this is the uh, 2015 YouTube video series that kicked off the modern flat earth uh, you know, belief system. And it is flat earth clues, which is C. Uh, I would have, I was on. Uh, There's a great God awful movies episode where they have Marshawn and watch flat earth clues. Oh, that would be fantastic. That would be funny. I've seen one or two of them and then I just got disgusted. It has this insidious uh, oratory style, like, you know, if you don't believe what I'm saying, you're an idiot. And it's like all idiotic stuff they're saying. <laughs> My problem with those shows is I get really, really opinionated and then it puts me in a bad mood. So, so 
<laughs> and so going. number eight, the creator of that video series, which is essentially single-handedly responsible for this flat earth craze in the modern time. Uh, and he is um, uh, featured in Behind the Curve. I would say the movie is pretty much all about him. And it is Mark Sargent. I didn't think he was the one that he was was the, he wasn't the gamer, was he? Yep. Really? No. Yep. Oh, I would have said that. Like ping pong video games. But you didn't. No, because I thought for sure he wasn't a gamer. <laughs> he played Smart video games. Game. Like my nephew who doesn't want to go to college. Professional video gamer? I didn't think games. they even said that. Yeah, tell that to my nephew. He thinks he's going to be a professional video gamer and just told his mother, my, my sister-in-law, he doesn't want to go to college because he's going to be a professional gamer. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, he can go to community college and get an AA degree. Yeah, he can go and grow up. Take some and classes. When he's an adult, there won't be, there'll be something else. It is so weird to see you guys in my room. It just is so strange. Romero's in my room. <laughs> Isabella's in my room. I'm in my room. It's How do you so know weird. I'm not in your room, Susan? Because I don't have yellow flowers right now. <laughs> Isabella, what's an AA degree? Associate degree. Associate of Arts. Associate of Arts. Arts. College for two I years, two. that's the degree you come out with. If you don't okay. like it. I have yeah. two of them. Also, how come Mark Sargent doesn't have a Wikipedia page? It's um, you know, that is odd. He isn't quite notable enough, I guess. I have a friend who homeschooled for high school and he decided to take classes at MPC and he graduated. He took so many classes that he was able to graduate high school with an AA degree so he can go straight to, uh, he doesn't, essentially doesn't have to do Junior in college. Yeah. yeah. He can cool. just go straight to uh, only do two years of college and be done with his uh, degree, which he's going to think he's going to do music or something like that. But yeah. Okay. Oh, Question now. number nine. Okay. Who knows rappers? This is the Flatline uh, singer, and uh, he tweeted a lot of people are turned off by the phrase flat earth, but there's no way you can see all the evidence and not know. Grow up. Who is that rapper? Is that how he sounds? Uh, B.O.B. B.O.B. A letter A. Rob hey, just happened you, to post that ever video to B. O. B. this week. Bobby Ray Simmons, letter A. And did anyone get that? Yeah. 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 Bill Nye and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson posted a video about it this week. And did something else happen Bobby recently? Do this for trivia. Yeah, because this was a while ago when they. Yeah, yeah. it turns out the world's flat. <laughs> As, as pictured by, by, by the Mars helicopter, it got yeah. a good picture. Of it. Yeah, the news is Mars is also flat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and finally, uh, this guy has played trivia with us, so I hope you all know this was Ross Blotcher. Yay! Yep. Yay. I thought it was Jim it. Underdown. I, Jim thought Under, it was I would have guessed Under that. Except Jim, Jim Underdown fits the description. Sort yeah. of. Except just as well as Ross. No, no he no, doesn't. Not as because well. he did not, Jim Underdown did not do the urophagia. And he did not drink his own urine. And, and, <laughs> I, and I did you know, know of. <laughs> and, and, and people, I did not interview Jim Underdown uh, for Skeptical Inquirer, but I did Ross Blotcher, and that's the pull, pill quote in my article right there. All yeah. right, all right. I interviewed Jim Underdown about this whole thing because he was there. So, yes, he was. I was there for one of the days. It was quite quite fun oh you were there were more flat earthers than skeptics there it was uh, very creepy that's what ross said and and <laughs> were you were you nearby when when the sun was hitting the horizon and they were denying that it was going below the horizon i think i would uh, if that was the first night no i was only there the second day and then we as a skeptics after the, the test of that day we went to a i don't know an applebee's or some kind of restaurant to eat and some of the uh the flat earthers came too. But most yeah. of the flat earthers were really scary people. They believed every single conspiracy that there was. That, uh, yeah, that, that's exactly what- And they the seemed quote, really angry. That's exactly what the quote uh, that Ross gave was. It, it's just, it, it leads to every other uh, unscientific belief. It's amazing. Are you putting the chat, uh, the stuff in the chat? Dan? I will do that for you now. I put the two links. It's a two-part God Awful Movies episode. Okay. It's Thank you. One through seven and then eight through 14. Um, but Hamilton I and I watch it. All right. I'm adding it to my thing pile of things to watch. <clears throat> well, listen After to it. It's a podcast. Oh. Susan, did you ever watch that show that I recommended? The, what is with, the flat, with the frogs? The frogs, yeah. I looked at it and I said, what the hell? 
<laughs> you have to watch at least the first episode. Watch watched like, part of it, and I thought, <laughs> wait, wait, what? Blind this frog is rant. Really weird. <laughs> what happened? What All right, happened? so here we go. So um, in slash A, not applicable. Four. Four. Oh. Remember what I average I said this is going to get. So let's just see how I did. Schrodinger's cat scratch fever. Six. Okay, we're at a five average. Earth Day finally joins AARP. Seven. Wow. Ooh, the average wow. is going up. The Weeping Angel food cake. Nine. One. Oh. What? Nerd. What did you miss? <laughs> <laughs> the same one everybody did. Which is? Espanol. The Spanish one. Oh, you didn't believe it was flat as an encephalogram. Mm -hmm. Oh, pyramid at UFOs for five-year-olds. Six. Well, I was wrong on my predictions, that's for sure. Good job. What is that? Six, six, nine, seven, four. Average out to somebody quickly. Seven. No, that would be like <laughs> six, I think. So six point three two. Okay, six. Much better. Those Very poor good, deluded Robert. people. Don't they know that the earth is actually banana shaped? <laughs> I thought it was a donut. I thought it was concave. Uh, I'm in for donut earth. Yeah, me donut too. earth. We'll donut it. earth. It's a 10-dimensional brain. Pac-Man Earth is still my favorite. It's flat earth. It's parabolic it's hyperboloid. Come back on the other. A hyperbolic oh, yes, parabolic? It's a hyperdimensional, uh, yes. Yes, I know that. It's a hyperbolic parabola. Mm. Saddle surface. I'm copying the answers, but I can't see because somebody's in front of my keyboard. All right, so we have next. Ooh, that's scary looking. Move, Hamilton. You're on my mouse. Don't be mean to Hamilton. <laughs> Don't sit on the keyboard. Don't be mean to Hamilton. Oh, my God. Hamilton, don't be mean to Joe. <laughs> yeah, how's it going, Joe? Her, uh, it has a musical uh, reference. Joe? Joe, music, Joe Hamilton. Oh, Joe Hamilton. Okay. Joe uh, Hamilton. So we, who's next? I can't see because somebody. I am. Okay, sitting on my stuff. Uh, by the way, Susan, what, I wasn't right. I wasn't listening when you were giving what the average was. What was the average? 6.3. Oh, it was pretty good. I guess seven. Okay. Hey, oh, yeah, so I was making that up. Oh, oh, I thought you really were. <laughs> I, <laughs> that was two times pi. I actually, it, I, it was 6.4. I didn't feel like correcting. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now, are you making that up, Kyle? No, no, no. I, uh, here we get the proof. <laughs> it's it it too pi. Absolute proof. It's round. That's the circumference. Wait, you actually have a physical one-line calculator? Of course. Doesn't, yeah. Don't you all? No, I just use Wolfram Alpha. I have yeah, a well, what phone. Was the <laughs> I was just going to do it in pencil and paper, but I, now I feel stupid. You you have a spreadsheet right there. I know, but I can't. So I have this calculator. So Avi, I have this Avi, I have this calculator, and I wrote the firmware for it. <laughs> Where's Leonard? I want to see okay. Leonard wins. Yeah, Leonard yeah. wins. Can't be Is that down. a TI? Oh, give me a break. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the ones I, with I, the big I, block? I I, I will. Be kind and not be insulted by that. <laughs> Remember the big block? The big like TI? It. They made them in my hometown. Aww. You're insulting poor Leonard. There's nothing wrong with TI. He's blood pressure. No, they were the first, they were beginning. They were, they were mass not, e not Not even close. But that's well, I mean, the mass production of them in the early 80s, they, were, they set the yeah, I didn't know Atari made up. Lowering the cost, you know what I mean? They I got them down Atari to make no. All righty then. Was so we are Commodore? going to. Yes, it's a Commodore calculator. There you go. So, so, so uh, Joe's iPhone, the most important question. Did I screw my own team? What did my team get? Four. Four. Yes, you screwed <gasps> your own oh, team. Oh, the oh, man, the man. Is yes. The lowest score yeah. of all of them? Yeah, that was your team. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a relevant category. The curse of Guys, Susan. Guys, you remember that? Susan is not going to be a genius about any of these things. Kevin, where are you on the screen? There you For are. me? Yeah, I just had couldn't find you on the screen. <laughs> it's it's amazing. <laughs> I didn't ask you to put me second, but you put me second. Is that amazing? 
Why? Yeah, because my category is the number two. <gasps> yes. Ooh. It is 422. I have a fascination with the number two. Oh. Today being 422, I wrote a category about two. Maybe you'll like this category, or maybe you'll think it stinks like number two. <laughs> <laughs> so my mute is. Could it be our second favorite category? Yeah, and hurry. <laughs> it might be. In three, two, one, mutes. Kevin, you'll have to unmute. Unmute. It's kind of all over the place category. Um, the first question is, I'm going to put it in the chat as I say them. What was the second video shown on MTV? It's a multiple choice. And there's all the lists. It's one of those was the second one. Everybody knows the first one. Does anybody know the second one? As if half of them are musical questions, music related. Question number two. Name the artist that released his third album in 1979. The album spent seven weeks at number two on the Billboard Top Album chart. Pink Floyd's The Wall was the number one album and kept this artist from the number one spot. In an interview, the artist said, I love Pink Floyd, but I hated them that year. Ten albums later, this artist would finally reach number one with his 13th and final album released in 2014. Name the artist. Another music one, surpassing. Let me put it in there. The Everly Brothers in 1984 named the best selling musical duo of all time. Okay, here's one. If you're a fan of Twilight Zone, you'll know. Besides the narrator, Rod Serling, name the cast members of the Twilight Zone episode two. One was cast as the woman. The other was cast as the man. The woman is best known for a TV series which ran from 1964 to 1972. The man is best known for his role as a tough guy in many action movies. Name both the woman and a man if you get either one of or both, you get one point. Louis Feinberg played second fiddle in quotes. What is his better known stage name? Name the 1950 American musical starring Doris Day as Nanette Carter, which was inspired by a 1925 stage musical, No, No, Nanette. This film is the first time Doris Day received top billing and the first time she danced on screen. Name, the, name it. Okay. What kind of beer does actor Jonathan Goldsmith pretend to drink in a series of TV commercials that ran from 2006 to 2016? This next one is long. Basically, I have some blanks, and they're all the same word, fill in the blank, and except if it has a letter in front of it, then it's a different, you'll see it. Basically, this is a recipe for something. Fill in the blanks with the same word, which is part of the answer. 
except for the blanks that have a letter, those are different ingredients. So preheat the oven to 400 degrees, place the blanks on a baking sheet, rub them with canola oil, bake for one hour. Make sure they're sufficiently cooked, blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on. You can read it if you want me to read it out loud, if you want to just read it. It's all there. Um, what is that recipe for? I think you ran out of... of I'm going to have to post the bottom of it again. It didn't get the whole thing. I'm going to post the little, just one more sentence didn't come through. Kevin, the blanks are all the same thing with the extra letters attached? Uh, like if it ends in an S, it's just a plural of the blank. But if it starts with a different letter, it's a different ingredient. But it's the but, same letters, same word. Uh, no, no. All the, all the ones that have no letters except end in an S possibly are the same word. But everything else, like it says B, 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 that's a different ingredient. If it starts with a letter, it's a different ingredient. You don't really have to know, but it just if I left if I left them all in, it'd be way too easy. So I took out some key ingredients to make it silly. Oh, okay. So the word that we're, we're trying to get is the one that is, is in the title of the recipe. So you have to know what is this recipe for. Remember, it. it involves the category. Very clever, very clever, Kevin. I think people will get it. Okay. Okay, I'm losing my window here. Be a fun one to discuss. I think so. I think you guys will like it. Looks delicious. Name the song with the lyric. It's no big sin to stick your two cents in if you know when to leave it alone. I tried to say it without singing it to not give it away. And the last one is about coins. Question 10, the US produced a two cent coin for a few years. Name any one of those years. There's a hint. There were three presidents during those years, two of which of those presidents are on US bills or, and or coins. With one exception, uh, the presidential dollar coins, all three would be on, but don't count those. You know what I mean? Not counting the presidential dollar coins. If you count those, all three have been on coins. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Anybody have yeah. any questions? No. And one of the reasons I'm, I'm like fascinated by the number two, my father was a second son. I am a second son and I have two sons. Oh. Isn't that strange? And one of them is a second son. That's right. My son, Jake, is my second son. My, I have an older brother and a younger brother, and my dad was the second son. I don't know if my grandfather had an older brother. It must mean something. It means nothing, really. <laughs> 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 it just made me think about the number two. <laughs> it makes you uh, write a category about two. Yeah, just That's one of those clever. things. I like your little, that you had a little thing of reason a little thing to say to us, and you posted it in there. That's pretty funny. I added that to the spreadsheet. Okay, here we go. I'll put Rob, I'll put you in the correct room. I'm going to go to Schrodinger's cat scratch for your, are you guys singing that the whole time? No? No, that's in the wrong room, Susan, you're putting I me. know, I know, I know, I have to move you. Calm down, just don't go. Okay. Okay, now you can go. Okay, thanks. Hi, team. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Good to see you. All right. The uh, question I left off was two, two, two mints in one. Name the product. <laughs> Double mint. 
No. Probably them. No. This is the okay. second video shown on MTV. I started to write an MTV category a long time ago, and I was. Oh really? I have an MTV category. I couldn't. I couldn't get enough um, answers to make it a full category. See, the problem with music, I start writing a category. I get really into one question. And I do like four questions on just one specific thing. <laughs> that would work. I, I have a spreadsheet with all these questions on it. And so I'll do that. If I get like something I've got more than 10 on, I'll yeah. make them several. I've got several, but I haven't been writing questions in a while. Okay. So what was the second video shown on the MTV? I also don't know the first one. So the first, first one was Buggles Video Killed the Radio Star, followed by Pat Benatar, I believe. Would be the it second. could be. I, third, I, I think it's easy top was later. I remember. Wait, M MTV, that's what they used to show like music videos on. Yeah, there, right? it was 1981 yeah. or okay. 92. I could not remember. Now you just have really video. trashy like, reality show. It was amazing. It was so <laughs> flipping amazing. It's like, what the hell is this? Just could <laughs> not <laughs> call in sick for work. Okay, I name. bet it's, I, I think it might be. Uh, Pat Benatar. I, I'm fine guy. with that. That sounds could be good for me. Never heard of him. What? Awesome. Pat Benatar? Nope, never heard of him. It's a woman. It's You've a never woman. heard of Pat Benatar? Nope. Uncalled He's been him. very, do very secluded. Maybe has released his third album. I think number two is Tom Petty and the Heartbreaker. Could be. It wouldn't be Prince. I think Prince was a little later. I don't remember. Number three, I think, is the Carpenters. Nobody has a is going to say no or yes. I'm fine or, with that. I have no no clue. Me neither. Did, did we have a guess on two? Tom Petty, I guess. Yeah, I'll pencil that in. The silence is making, me, is making me regret my answer. I had to go look and see if I was on mute. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, did like, I get something wrong? Did you say something wrong? <laughs> Besides the narrator, Rod Stewart. I know number four. What is it? That's Charles Bronson and Elizabeth Montgomery. If you say so. Charles Bronson would be the tough guy, a woman, a man, and she had a TV series. What was it? It was called Two. What was the premise of it? I don't remember this. Was that the one uh, where they were the they were survivors of some war between their peoples, and they didn't speak mm. each other's language, and they end up, you know, frequently try and kill each other throughout the episode, and in the end, they get together, and then they reveal that their names are Adam and Eve. Oh. I remember that. Oh, mm -hmm. look. no, different episode. They don't reveal that names are Adam. Oh. They just call it a love story. Oh, okay. The narration says but nonetheless. Oh, the Adam and Eve one is when the guy lands the rocket on the planet. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're survivor, right. and he finds a woman that looks like Elizabeth Montgomery. Yeah. Yep. Okay, number five. Five. I want to say what I think, but I want to see if anybody has something else. For I was going to say uh, Larry Fine. I thought. Wait, I don't know who that is. He's the guy who plays the what is it? One of the the guys in the Three Stooges. I, I thought Lou Costello. Oh, okay, maybe I'm I don't wrong. know. I was thinking Jack Benny. I don't know who any of those people are. So. Oh my God. I don't know Jack Benny. Culture. Who's Jack Benny? Jack Benny. Oh my god. I've heard of him. I don't yeah, I don't Oh wait, don't, Avi hasn't heard of Jack Benny either? Well I've heard of him. I've never heard of him. I don't I don't I I don't think it's uh Dave, please tell us you've heard of Jack Benny. I, I, I lean more toward one of the three stooges like Larry. I've heard of Jack Benny, but I I mean don't know the answer to this question. Okay, but, but yeah. you've heard of Jack Benny. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. Name the night. What is second fiddle? Like you're not the 
first person. Right, you put it in quotes. So does that, what is that like? An that's oh, like maybe he's actually played a fiddle. Susan, who's Jack Benny? He's a famous comedian, very famous. You can look well, him up. Obviously, he's not that famous. I haven't heard of him. Oh, oh. Uh, he's quite famous. <laughs> he's beyond famous. As he's I've never heard, heard of him. him. Um, it's shocked. Look him up. Well, don't right now because I might say. Is something. he still alive, Susan? I only. Oh no, no, no! This, is, this is a very famous comedian. In the famous. days of radio. Famous. He's very famous. Oh famous. Okay, category on Jack, Jack Benny next. Okay, get you. But back. I don't think it's Jack Benny for this answer. He used to pretend to play the the radio, uh, play the violin. And he was actually a quite a good violin player, even though he mm. pretended to be horrible at it. Yeah. Isn't he the guy who was always stingy? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he'd be like Red. He's Red Skeleton was be, uh He's bigger than Red Skeleton. This I've heard like, of Red Skelton. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of Jack. At the same time, day, he was as big as George Burns. Oh, George Burns and Gracie. Oh my God, those hilarious. Okay. Anyway, going to six. Um, Doris Day was a resident of our county. Yeah. Yeah, she lives in Pebble Beach. Yeah, she just recently died. Yeah, I, I think that's T for two. Yeah, that would make sense. And I know, I know the next one for sure. That's Dos Equis. Yes. Oh, I yeah, I've, okay. The most interesting man in the world. The following is a recipe for what? I thought it was for stuffed pasta shells. Like stuffed shell pasta. You get like the giant shell shells. Doesn't, and then you doesn't two them. have to come into play somehow though? I don't know. I, because oh, he, he said, I'm oh, could it, could it be cheese. twice baked potatoes? But oh, what? twice baked potatoes. Place the potatoes on a baking sheet. Place the place the in a large mixing bowl and add the add the what? That's what's tripping me up. I, I thought know. the sour cream. word had to go on all the blanks. Bacon and sour cream. No. Yeah. Bacon bits. Bacon bacon. bits. Oh, sour, sour cream. cream. Yeah, it's quite oh, baked. Oh, I it thought is. the same word had to be. Oh, no, no, it's blank. very confusing. With the sharp, well, it's not so confusing. We figured it out with the sharp knife Basically, cut each potato in half. The, the letters that are followed by a blank, he just blanked out to not give us the, the answer. I think it's removed bacon oh. bits. So, yeah, uh, it's twice baked potatoes. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, because then you see bacon, bacon bits and sour cream again down here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, so I had no answer for that. Good. I like that out loud. This. Doesn't the word two have to come into play? And I go, yeah. I didn't, potatoes. didn't even. Uh, Top each potato with, okay, grated cheese and pop them in the oven until the potatoes warm through. Yeah, yum, yum, yum. Okay, number nine, it's no big sin to stick your two cents in. Big shot, Billy Joel. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think you're right. All right. Okay, 10. Uh, uh, 1864 I'm... to 73 is when we made the two cent piece. There you From go. Coin collector. Oh, you did know that. Oh, wow. Well, we kicked ass. Well, you guys <laughs> kicked ass. <laughs> so, so, uh, did we come up with an answer for number five? No. I, think I was we were coming up with Larry from the. Okay, I'm good with Larry. Fine. What was I Isabella? What was um larry fine was the actor's yeah. name all right so we've got something for everything we're not necessarily are we fine we're okay. fine with fine yeah we're fine okay, Susan, all right cool what was the guy of this comedian what was the name of this comedian jack benny, jack benny. <laughs> all right hold okay. on you guys look him up what I'm seeing is a football Roger player. No, no. Very <laughs> famous comedian. Okay. Right. It's, uh, yeah, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> he's really it's old. He died uh, 1974. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Jack he's long Benny, dead. He's, he was played, played this character. 
There. Uh, oh, you got a picture. You've got a thing. Jack wow. Benny. That doesn't look like him at all. What did Tired. he do? He was a had the show, the Jack Benny show on radio. Oh, look at his Wikipedia page is a mess. He How made, Jack he made Benny the transition to television. Susan, he maybe started in the original it. production of To Be or Not To Be, which was later remade by Mel Brooks. Ooh. Susan, are you going to go and fix his... Uh... No, I, I'd i just be way too much. <laughs> it looks way too hard. Well, no. Oh, there's an FBI file on Jack Benny. What? Yeah. An FBI file on everybody. Links. This has multiple issues. Please improve or discuss this topic. Page. This article needs additional citation. Yep. Poor thing. You, Poor die and somebody you, act, you act like you know the guy. I believe well, the sponsor of his television program was Lucky Strike Cigarettes. Whoa. Jack Benny. He was... One joke Susan, Jack I Benny. can see your heart breaking through the screen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce my first guest, I would like to tell you... You don't recognize that voice? And as a rule... It's, they all have that transatlantic no, accent. They all kind of sound the but same. this one is so funny, I really want you to hear it. This is about two... Yeah, okay. Jack, Jack, Jack Benny, is, is, there, there's a bit in one of his shows where he's walking down the street and somebody jumps out with a gun and points at it and says, your money earns his life. And Jack Benny doesn't say anything. And the guy says, well, come on. And Jack Benny says, I'm thinking... <laughs> he's really stingy that's his, that's part of his thing your money or or your life they don't get it and they don't they didn't think it was funny carl you're 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 older at heart i'm i'm a fan of the old time radio yeah george burns and gracie allen jack Benny, oh she Shimmer, was hilarious Shimmer mcgee and molly fred allen allen mcgee is is not just from there he was also a thing when i was a kid like he had a he had a, like a cartoon um, and stuff. Of course, Our, you, I'm you, you can't the necessarily hold. Susan, did you know that this meeting is being recorded? I can't believe it. You don't know who Jack Benny is. Who's that? God, Ivy, I can see your tonsils. Yeah, I'm very tired. Even though I've been sleeping like way too much lately because um, the semester's over, which yeah. means I'll be at the office till ever, um, which is means that when I get to the office, it's like 1 p.m. And then I was there last night to like 11 p.m. Oh, okay. so bad. That's not hardly any late at all. If I'm in bed before one or at least midnight, that's an early day for me. I go to bed, take this wrong. I go to bed, but I read the New York Times, then I read the Washington Post, then I read my favorite cartoons because I got to know what's going on with Luann. Got to know what's going on with Luann. And I'm falling asleep by nine or 10. <laughs> I just can't believe it. It's just so weird to me to go to bed so early when there's so much night still left. Well, I'm not, I'm not a night person. You get up early though, right? 4 a.m.? Well, okay. No, that makes sense. I don't get up. I didn't get up today. I didn't get out of bed till 10. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was awake at seven, eight and reading. Cause now the New York times and the Washington post are different. So I got to read those. So, mm. you know, things, things are going on. I answer emails and Facebook messages and just do it while I'm before I go to bed and when I get up, look at, look at Carl running. Run, Carl, run! Run, Carl, run! Run, Carl! Don't trip! I don't know your address. So I can't call the police and say, hey, he fell and he can't get up. Does Carl live with anybody? Carl, do you live with anybody? Cat. A couple cats. His parents are across the street, right? 
my parents are diagonally across the street. My sister and brother-in-law are a block away. He has a very little bubble. There's six people in my house. I got six people six? living here. Yeah. Who's in there? Um, my husband and my two kids and then my parents. Oh, I didn't know your parents were living with you. Or do you live yeah. with your parents? They're living with us. Is that a new thing for the for COVID or um were they already there beforehand? Um this was just because they needed help. Oh yeah, that's good. I moved my mom in with me. Okay, I'm getting a joint breakout room for Mike Wolf. Hold on. Thanks too. You call me? We we well, we want to talk, we want to ask Kevin a question about question 10. Well, that's not gonna help you call me. Okay. Um, you know how to call him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you doing here? We didn't watch you. I know, Phil. I feel hurt. Okay, I'm going to go get him. Also, uh, I can move hurt. him to your thing. Here, he's, I'm just moving him. She's a jerk him in here. Yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, all right, hold. So they yeah. need to ask you a question. So wait until okay. I leave. Wait until I, I can leave. transport her on. Uh, number 10. Is this a. Con no, we able to buy soon and they're probably gonna buy their own place soon so um probably around this time next year we'll all be moving again in vegas still yeah do you like and living in las vegas i i can't handle your weather there at all i like the weather personally because i like the heat um i like that uh we have like a lot of sunshine and there's no worries about having to shovel snow and getting up early and having to make sure that you have groceries in case you get snowed in and just weird things like that that I just am not good at planning for. <laughs> we don't have that here in California. Yeah, but you're really expensive. Like hey, Isabella, it's, it's remember the last time you had to shovel snow at your house to get into your driveway? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you can look to the areas that are near like in um Fresno Bakersfield and that if you like heat but yeah it, so well California. if I was going to move into California I would want to make sure that I was near or nearer to the ocean I wouldn't want to live in a place that was still desert because it just wouldn't make sense to me you have to pay start paying you know state taxes and stuff like that and it's more expensive to live there might as well stay here because it's definitely cheaper. Yeah, I guess it's cheaper. <laughs> and then Psycon's here, so why not? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but no, honestly, we're kind of stuck here until the kids complete high school because there are scholarship programs out here to where they can um, get a lot of their college paid for. Mm -hmm. So until then... Um, we're kind of stuck here. Well, for for personal reasons, I like the idea that you're in that area, not only because of Psycon, but because it's nice to have you guys spread out and voting in Nevada, you know. Yeah. We want to keep, definitely keep that same. We need more people in, in uh uh Arizona and um Michigan and places like that too. Right. All right, I'm done with these people. They're taking too long. Let's bring them out. Ooh. Right. We've been out for a long time. Yeah. Get your ass over here now. Just Susan, I tell you, you Susan, you shouldn't fucking swear. I shouldn't fucking swear. <laughs> you know we're videotaping. Check this out. Check this out. I'm gonna show you something I did. So I've been enhancing people's pictures because. I did this genealogy talk. Oh, wait, I should wait till Leonard's here. Where is it be at? Coming back. Well, I'll share it because otherwise it'll just take forever. So this woman sent me, I told her to send me a picture and I would try to enhance it. So this is the photo she gave me. These are people from right before, there are young people who um, in Hungary, right before the Nazis came. Hey, Susan. Yeah. Uh, we had a clarification on number 10. Someone asked if they were consecutive years. I wasn't able to find a way to broadcast that to everybody. Um, okay, you so, can tell them in a minute. I, don't, I, yeah. guess, I think it's all yeah, right. Yeah, if it changes anything. So, all right. So look at this picture, you guys. Can you see it? 
Mm -hmm. They said that this was a group of young people just before the Nazis came to Hungary or just before the war. And so she gave me this picture and I went and I worked on it for a while. And here's some of the stuff I was able to do that one. And then, then I cleaned it up like this. Wow. Oops, and that's not it. Some reason or other, it's really weird when my computer does that. But anyway, here's the final. Susan, do you by any chance know the 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 surnames of the people of that those Hungary people? And were they Jewish? Yes, they're Jewish. Do you happen to know now, this the is a picture I turned it into, but I still got to. There's gotta some fix problem. her face. Yeah, I got to fix these. Maybe but I was showing her how to do it, but here's here's what it came wow. out. Here's the original right here, you guys. This is somebody, Leonard, that uh, somebody in that genealogy group, she sent me a picture and I've just been playing with it. And that's what it looked like when she sent it to me. Look at that. So yeah, incredible work. It just took me about 30 minutes and I got it to look like. You're, you're good that. at this shit. I'm getting better. But see, it's still not quite right. Like she's distorted and his yeah. is distorted. But it's a lot better. And um, anyway, so that's what I was doing today on one of my Zoom calls I was on. Cool. So I've seen some great pictures with AI assistants where they color it. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've been playing around hard. with that, but it's hit and miss. Some, it's not quite there yet. It's really hard to just do it on your own with like Photoshop. This this program is able to figure it out. So how better. many people here have heard of Jack Benny? <laughs> yeah. I have. Okay, well, oh, you stop it. Did you I, have like that? I don't know. We didn't know oh, we we're was. very mad at you. Wasn't Abby doesn't know who Pat Benatar is. His right. name was uttered in our room. Jack Benny's name was uttered in our room. Aren't you? Wasn't, Why? wasn't he like 39 years old? Oh, that's right. Karen, was it for the second fiddle question? That's what we did too. We said the same, but it wasn't. No, we, we, just, we didn't end up on that. And no, you're wrong. But the <laughs> thing is, is that Avi what? and Isabella and Brandy all said they'd never heard of Jack Benny. Avi, come on. I'd uh, heard of him. him. I'd heard of him, but no. I didn't know who he was. Why did you know who Jack Benny was? Jack Benny. Class Jack Benny. Jack Benny. Classic Jack you Benny. Rochester. Rochester. But it's You're the one that you heard of him. Forget about Jack Benny. Forget about Jack Benny. Yeah, it's, about Jack Benny. it's the wrong I, answer. I know all about Jack Benny, and Jack I'm too Benny young to know about that. Yeah, Kyle. He was not the second fiddle, though. Look at this is how we get people started. Look at the look at the temperature. You're all muted. Look at the temperature go up in the room. Karen, give it to us. Karen. Classic Jack Benny. Your money or your life. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a bit I've never heard. I bet you they've never heard uh, who's on first. What's on second? Yeah, okay, no, that no, one I know. We've all heard of that. That one I know. Everyone knows Evan that. Costello. No, not everybody. I would have think thought everybody heard of Jack Benny. Uh, well, so what are the? But why would he be the second fiddle? Well, it's not the answer, but it oh. came up in our in our room, and okay. and these people, these people. So, somebody got the answer. I heard people talking about it. These but educated Kevin, people. I thought I thought about Jack Benny. Educating people from a different the generation. Part. Only because of the fiddle part. And yeah, that's what I it said. Was, it was made that he's, he jokes around with it. That's the only reason I thought that. I thought that too. Okay, you ready for the answers? Moving along, yes, go. Yeah. Okay, number one, You Better Run by Pat Benatar. Yeah. yeah. Number two, how, did, how let me hear some answers that? for number two. I don't think anybody got number two. Let me hear some answers. Shut bon Jovi? No. Prince. Prince. No. Bruce Springsteen? No, he's still Bowie. alive. Who? Bowie. Tom no. Petty and the Heartbreakers. Bing, bing, we have a winner. Tom Woo! Petty and the Heartbreakers. Oh, wow. Number three. I don't think anybody got this one either. I heard Simon and Garfunkel. That's wrong. Carpenters? Oh, I heard carpenters. the Carpenters. That's wrong. What? Paul oh. and Oates. There you go. That's oh, the answer. Paul and Oates. Paul and Oates. Who listens to Paul and Oates? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Number four, I heard the same conversation about this episode where people confused it with another episode. It's not the episode that ended with Adam and Eve. It's the episode where two soldiers from different armies meet and kind of fight each other. And then the end, they fall in love. And it's Elizabeth Montgomery. The man and the woman. Oh, yes. Yeah. And Charles Bronson. But they end up being like Adam and Eve, right? Woo yeah, kind of. Yeah. But, but there was another episode specifically yeah. where a rocket landed and the woman he met looked a lot like 
um, Elizabeth Montgomery, but it was a different actress. And their names ended up being Adam and Eve. Well, we got the same name anyway, so yeah. it doesn't matter. Okay, number five, <laughs> I heard somebody say it, Larry Fine of the Three Stooges. Yay! Oh, gosh. And we're fine How with that. What's his last name? Fine, F-I-N-E. Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine. Dr. Oh, I'm Howard. Dr. Howard. Oh. And the Howard was Horowitz, right? Yep, yep. Larry Fine of the Three Stooges. He was second fiddle. He played the fiddle in a few episodes when he played like Pop Goes the Weasel and made Curly Box faster or something. Right, he was a good violinist. Yeah. I, I don't in think real. you would consider him a second fiddle, though. Well, he was always in a member of the second member of the Three Stooges. Mo was there. He was the second he one. He was there during Shemp and all the different he was, there, he was there the whole time. According to Warren, hey, fiddle. Curly, Larry, Moe. The first so one. one, two, three. Curly, Larry, Mo. No, it was good yeah, job, you girl. Glad you time. heard of the Three Stooges, too. Okay. Uh, number six is T for two. We got that. All right. Oh. Number seven is the most interesting man in the world drinks Dos Equis, which means two X. Okay. Remember I the commercial, the most interesting man in the world, and the means. Hey, Kelly. We got that one. Dos Equis. Um, number eight is indeed twice baked potatoes. Number nine is Billy Joel's song, Big Shot. <laughs> we knew it would be Billy Joel. We knew it was a Billy Joel song. Number well, we 10, we were with that. <laughs> number 10 is 19, uh, I'm sorry, 1864 to 1872. And they Yay! also, in 1873, Woo! there was a collector's version. This yeah. was during uh, Lincoln, uh, Johnson, and Grant. So what? What was the years? Woo! 1864. We were, we were one year to off. One year off. Anything oh, between man. 64 and 73. 1864, 1873. I thought people might guess Washington Jefferson, kind of a thing. I think we did really good. So. I think we did very good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was, that was who said category. that? Who's in good trouble category. now? Put you in a corner. Remember, your team gets bonus points if you score two. Did it stink? <laughs> no. We did good. Yeah, well, I you liked broke it. the curse of Susan, Kevin. Uh, yeah, you broke the curse. Okay. NA, not applicable. Three. Three and close. All right. Uh, pyramid UFOs for five year olds. We got. Five. Really? That's it? Okay. Schrodinger's cat scratch fever. Nine. Woo. <laughs> no. That was the no. team I was on. Yes, ma'am. Um, so it's not me. <laughs> Earth Day finally joins AARP. Eight. The Weeping Angel Food Cake, who was in the lead? Five. Somebody Ooh. just lost the lead. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Score, 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 Seven. Oh, God, we're getting killed. Then to 11, and then 14, and then 15, 15. Weeping Angel Food Cake, you just were, you should, if you'd had an average score, you would probably be at 16. So in A. I posted the answers with some links to the recipe. Fantastic. Okay, do we need a break, or are we ready to just keep going? I could use a break. Got to walk the dog. Okay, yeah. take a five minute break. Here, I'll, I'll do a pause. picture first. Can we oh, do wait, a picture, do a picture first? first, Kyle. Come back. Oh, well, Adrian's coming, possibly. So we might want to hold off on the picture. But I would need to leave. And go to oh, sleep. Yeah, so, so take a picture. If she comes, we'll, we'll take another one. Leonard, would Are you we take ready? a picture? Uh, look, almost. Yeah. Look, yeah. Smile and look at the camera or something, because you're always looking like. Are we ready? Yeah. All right, three. Two, one. Alrighty, got it. <laughs> Jeff oh. and Julie were messing around over there. Do we want a uh, another picture? Yeah, I'll take another one. All right. All right. You, done messing, <laughs> you done messing around, Jeff so we and Julie? We were taking a break, and we were all thinking about the fact that Julie works at Nike. Break. And so, break. Break. <laughs> oh. Three, two, <laughs> one. Picture. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fortunately, Aww. I took the picture before you raised your hands. Aww. Aww. <laughs> okay, five minutes. Avi, talk Hi, to everybody. You I'll give you a I don't I like who the others were, but.
but it was adorable. Where is Susan? Oh, she's Joe's iPhone. I'm back. I was looking, I'm Silly May, I was looking for the name Susan in the list. And that was a very cute duck picture that you had. Yeah, doesn't there, he look like very sweet? No, not like somebody who would actually be infiltrating a psychic event, right? It's a love, a lovely duck. He's a very lovely cute duck. little duck. I think I took it in New Zealand, that picture too. All right, we back. Somebody's going to tell Ross Botcher he was part of the category tonight. I think I will. Yeah, I was wondering if I was going to change that question. I had another backup if he was here, because that would have been not fair. You think he would have known? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he would have known. <laughs> yeah, when I interviewed him, we, we spent an inordinate amount of time about him drinking his pee. <laughs> so, we yeah. mentioned him, and we got the question wrong. <gasps> oh, no. We said if he was here, he'd know the answer to this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's oh, wait. Speaking of San Diego Comic Con, did anybody hear that it's on this year? When? Thanksgiving weekend. Well, that makes sense. Like it's supposed to be a scaled down one. Yeah, probably... like they're picking Thanksgiving weekend to try to scale it back. Well, they could always increase it if they wanted to, if they felt that you know it was going to be okay. Yeah, yeah that's well, interesting. That's good. I'm glad they are. We, we shall see how good an idea that turns out to be. Yeah. It will yeah, be a very good idea. Usually one of the most crowded conventions that exists. Yeah. Next to next to Dragon Con. But they but have control over how many passes they sell. So like they can control it as much as they want. And, and won't traveling be more expensive then? Isn't it the airline rates higher for holidays? That might it be. Is. And I think there may be hope people, people actually want to see their families during the holidays. Go figure. Like, you know, like maybe they didn't have Thanksgiving last year or something. What a oh, silly no. Don't be ridiculous. No one wants to see their families. Oh, not at all. <laughs> not after this year. They would just been stuck. I'm not flying out to go see my son at all. No. Uh -uh. Yeah, and I'm not heading up to see my grandkids as soon as my wife's fully vaccinated either. No, yeah. not, not going to happen. It's not that I have my son Caspian and Jamie come over every chance I can get him to come over. <laughs> no, nothing like that. So here's my, here's my story about that. So we just flew to Florida and back uh, to see uh, relatives and, you know, we're fully vaccinated, but it's still not hundred percent people on the plane. It was close. It was a full flight. We even were warned about that by United the day before you can change your flight at no charge. If you don't feel comfortable with this, you know, but what are the chances the next day was going to be any better? So we didn't. Um, and the only good thing was it was a two seat aisle, two seat configuration. So we weren't sitting right next to somebody. Not but meanwhile, bad. the person who sits in front of me, he's got a little toddler just under two. So didn't have to wear a mask who's standing up in the seat facing us with their face about a foot away from us. And I finally had to say something. My wife was not. You were masked, me. right? I was masked, but still. Did you wear yeah. a shield? No. Okay, I'm debating. I'm supposed to go to Hawaii, and I don't know whether I want to wear a shoe. So, so finally, after it didn't stop, Where I was hoping. I was hoping it was just going to stop. I, I wrote on my iPhone in big font because we were over the engine. There was no way I was going to be able to tell the mother anything without screaming at the top of my lungs. So I showed her the phone, and she complied, which was nice. Please keep your child facing forward. Have, having anyone without a mask breathing so closely in our direction now is not safe or polite. It's just creepy. Yeah. Isabella, at least wear some kind of eye protection. Yeah, I was thinking either wearing like, because I'm supposed to go to Hawaii and it's supposed, we're going to be, I think, on American Airlines. And they're telling us now it's going to be a full flight, which I'm a little anxious about. So as you think of wearing a shield or just walking around in sunglasses. My, my doctor <laughs> today had, if, if you don't wear glasses, uh, he had a kind of a safety, it's a nice looking pair of glasses but really it was just safety glasses yeah they yeah. were quite tight fitting glasses okay, but yeah, I'd I do eye protection yeah for sure yeah you can wear your swimming goggles uh-huh <laughs> yeah just a full body condom and yeah. don't and everyone stop trimming your nose hair <laughs> I haven't heard I haven't heard anyone say that it's one of the first things I did tell I, tell them all my friends don't trim your nose hair <laughs> Why? Why not? Why? It's another filtering system for your body. Oh, oh don't you can be take ridiculous! It and comb it up over the top. <laughs> I don't know. I think on on Zoom, I think you need to have trimmed nose hair. Yeah. Well, I, especially for the people with low mounted cameras. 
Karen, yeah. after hearing that, Karen, after hearing that, I'm sorry I trimmed my uh, my ear hair. <laughs> you hear any better? What? And what? My hair, my hair is super bushy, <laughs> and so one of the first things I start doing is braiding my hair. I don't know if this makes any sense, but I figure you can, that's what you're braiding your nose hair. <laughs> <laughs> Beat me to it. Yes. I, wow. I met a guy, I met that's a guy amazing. Who had hair growing off the bottom of his earlobes? Oh, oh, and I'm sorry. Miniature organ. No, I don't. I'm no. so glad we're recording. You say this. that as if it's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> he was a young That's guy, what... and I thought, you know, would be, and he was kind of cute. I thought it'd be like cool if he could figure out some way to like put a little bead or something on the hair. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was, like I was at uh, Susan, I was at uh, Star Market, and I saw a guy and he had like extremely like overly long ear hair and it was like coming out of his ear and it was like to the length of his earlobe just coming out of his ear. <laughs> it's a little unsettling. I just took <laughs> a bite of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're coming back. We're back, we're back. That was a long five minutes, but so in my notes, I wanted to say that Gail couldn't make it tonight. She sends her condolences. She not condolences, whatever it is. Apologies. Apologies. Regret. Jim Regret. Newman isn't here this week. He's sorry. He he's really busy working on the podcast. Go fact yourself. He'll be here next week. Um, I wanted to uh, drop the drop the name Tony Ortega. I had a Zoom call with him just before we got in here, just to piss off Paula that I just had a Zoom call with him for a few minutes. Paula. Paula, I hear you. I just had a Zoom call. With, he called me and said, Susan, can I please talk to you? And I said, well, you can have 10, 15 minutes of my time. He goes, okay, that's long enough. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that Tony Ortega. Whatever. Said, Are we supposed to recognize that name? Tony Ortega, he's the I'm expert. joking, I'm joking. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's the expert on Scientology. He's a, he's a uh, journalist who's very, very, very amazing. Um. Caspian's birthday is, was yesterday. And happy birthday a, to you. And as a way of uh, giving him a oh, gift, well, mine, not Caspian. happy birthday to we him. Share. Where is Cas? Is he there? Cas there. Caspian and I share a birthday then. Oh, oh. oh that's interesting. So, yeah. so I thought, so as a gift happy to birthday, Caspian, you. I'm not, I'm not Thank having you. everybody sing to you. Unless you want us to. But, but but I baked an angel food cake for us. Oh, is that right, Janina? Just that enough so for everybody. We'll Just come get, get out to Oregon. I didn't know. I'm writing that down. Janine's birthday is the same as Caspian's. That's cool. Is uh, that happen every year? Um, only Most on the years. Use of Jack Benny's in here. Look at Isabel. What the hell? How did you do that? Can you make it fun? <laughs> You just turn your computer over. Did you move to Australia? How did you do that? <laughs> How come your hair isn't like going down? <laughs> how can, how it can is. You... Airspray. There's no gravity. Why is the background <laughs> right side up and she's upside down? <laughs> well, my background, my background's right because if you, if I, you know, that's how it's orientated to me. You guys are weird. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, Richard Saunders, can you give your little plug? Yes. All right. Coming up on this week's Skeptic Zone, episode number 654, we're going to be interviewing Mick West about the so-called Pyramid UFO shot Ooh. by the U.S. Navy. And Mick gives a full explanation. And you can follow that up and see exactly how these videos were made. We have news from Australian skeptics via the newsletter. And this week on the Trove segment, we're going to be looking at references in the Australian press to poltergeist which should be interesting. Also, I, uh, Yuri Geller gets a mention from the Winnipeg Free Press from 1975. All that coming up on the Skeptic Zone podcast, skepticzone.tv. Thank you. And if you guys didn't hear earlier, Richard Saunders just got his own Wikipedia page in Afrikaans. Yahoo! <laughs> Carl is so funny. And yes, is a copy of a pace of a birthday wish that he's previously in some of the first title. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Carl. <laughs> I've seen that before, Carl. Oh, yeah, that's Once great. or twice? Nobody, Once or twice. Nobody sees my birthday. It's not anywhere around there. Okay, Kyle. 
Hey, Kyle, I think I'm one episode behind. So I don't know if you started voting on the episodes yet. Not yet. I've been dragging my feet on the old voting thing this week. Just a short one on something called the Fleisch Kincaid Readability Test. Uh, speaking of the Navy, the Navy invented this. It's a way of trying to measure um, the grade level one would need to understand some text. It's pretty basic, though. So we just kind of tear that apart and talk about the pros and cons. That's this week on Data Skeptic. I remember Microsoft Word had like the option to check the flesh Kincaid level and it would be like a challenge to try to get it like as high as you could when I was a kid. Nice. Yeah, it is easy to hack if you uh, work at it. So well done. Very good. Very, very good, Joel. Okay, so we are back. We are back, 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 back in black, as they say. And we have not applicable with seven. Uh, pyramid UFOs for five-year-olds with 11. Weeping Angel Food Cake for 14. And a tie at 15 with Schrodinger's Cat Scratch Fever and Earth Day finally joins AARP. Wow, these names are amazing. I don't know how we do it every week, but you guys outdo yourselves every week. And well, except that this week, they're all too easy to pronounce. No, I like that. I'm, I'm enjoying that. <laughs> well, of and course you do. Speaking of which, Leonard, is your turn. All right. Will I make you a co-host? Um, do, well. your, do your best. Uh, you are a co-host, Kevin. I think I returned, took it away from you, didn't I? Mm. Oh, it's going. Like, bye bye. Yep, and don't I, let me forget to put. Make sure Kevin gets in the right room whenever we go to close rooms. Okay. Okay. I, give I, us your category so we can groan. Okay. So in uh, honor of many many requests, these are all. True or false? Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and those of you that know me know that one of the things I am uh, constantly railing about are common misconceptions, things that people think are true but aren't. So there is a Wikipedia article, a list of common misconceptions, and I uh, picked 10 out of there. And some are worded as the wrong thing. Some are worded as the right thing. So you can't base it on that. So. All right, muting everyone. So what's the category called? True or false, some things are commonly known, but wrong. All right, three, two, one. Oh, okay. oh. Sorry, I muted you while you were in the middle, so. All right. So number one. Copernicus cited the ancient Greek Aristarchus as inspiration for the idea of heliocentrism. Number Is two. Mono in my team this time? <laughs> <laughs> he knows these. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Number two, many ancient Greek statues were originally, spelled wrong, brightly colored. Number three, the forbidden fruit in the Bible is explicitly said to be an apple. Number four, Microwave ovens are tuned to heat water. Number five, on average, a 21 year old in the Middle Ages lived to about 65 years old. Number six, The claim that Columbus overturned the idea of a flat earth dates from the 17th century. Number seven, friction with the air is not what causes re-entering spacecraft to get hot. You knew there had to be some physics in here. 
number eight, Einstein disputed quantum entanglement, also spelled wrong, because he, it violated his special theory of relativity. Number nine, the word schizophrenia comes from the Greek words for to split and mind. Number 10, Tailoring instructions to an individual student's learning style improves outcomes. All true or false? Hi, Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Adrian. She's going to go on the first team. Yay, we need help. Yes, you badly do. <laughs> it's called I shouldn't be cheering that, Adrian. This is our comeback round. We have both the answers. Yeah. <laughs> You're very black and white today, Adrian. I, I am. <laughs> no. Oh, Isabella is upside down. She's in Australia. Oh. All right. So these what? look very clear cut, very well. Thank you for putting formatting them in nice little bits. Like I put them on my spreadsheet so easily. I appreciate that. You don't know how I appreciate those little things. All right, here we go. I'll put you in your room, Adrian. Adrian is going into non-applicable. And I'm going to your room, which is. Which was the AARP one. Earth Day AARP. finally joins AARP. There we go. All right. How many we got? So I know like three of these. I know. Well, I have a feeling about five of them, but I'm not positive. I have okay. a couple, but it's probably the same ones you guys do. Okay. Number yeah, one. Here, I have a feeling about a few, but probably the same. I'm using my pendulum to Anybody find out. <laughs> I have a coin to flip. Just okay. in case you need it too. So number one, Copernicus book cited the ancient Greek uh, Aristotle. Tarkus as inspiration for the idea of heliocentrism. No centrism. Idea. Centrism. No idea. No idea. No idea. Okay, let's go on and let's do the ones we know we know. Number two, many ancient Greek statues were originally brightly colored. No idea. I would guess false on that one because I feel like they're marble, right? Yeah, I guessed false because I went to Greece and I don't remember hearing that, although I was intoxicated much of the time. <laughs> really? I would think we would know that because yeah. there would be something that would still be preserved. Let's go with false and then come back if we change our minds. Okay, okay. number three, uh, I know. The forbidden false. fruit in the Bible is explicitly said to be an apple. Is false. 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 Four. Microwave ovens are tuned to heat water? What does no that even mean? Well, I, I know sort of the answer to this question, but it's an Kelly, do you know? No, I, I don't. Okay, so what I remember, the photons that the microwave generates are one times 10 to the negative 245th power or something. And they're finely tuned to make water molecules vibrate or in, inside the food, which causes friction, which causes the feet, food to heat up. Right. That's yes. how it heats the food. And yes. the, the, the higher the water content your food is, the hotter it'll get. But I'm not yeah, sure if that's the way. same thing, the tune to heat water, so. Well, it sounds yeah. like it would make sense. Yeah, that makes I'm sense. Um, myself. But I, I could totally see that being like a way that people explain it that's actually like Incorrect. oversimplified. And, well, yeah. I read it in Skeptical yeah. Inquirer. Oh, well, then it's right. Okay. Well, no, about the water heating up the molecules. You, you didn't read about the microwave being tuned to heat water. I mean, specifically. So oh, I, wonder, it's not, I well, think it's, it's right. It's a specific yeah. photon. It's a frequency. It's a right. Yeah. Let's go with true and then come back. Yeah, okay. the, the word tuned confused me, but what you're saying makes perfect sense. Okay. 
For number on five, average, I'm guessing true. On average, a 21-year-old in the Middle Ages lived to about 65. The mortality rate of children was super high. Right. right. But if you could make it past childhood, your odds of making to 60 were high. That's what I always told. So yeah. if you're 21, I think it's true. Yeah, I agree. You lose. Okay. Number six, the claim that Columbus... Columbus overturned the idea of a flat earth dates from a 17th century. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I would, I almost would guess that would be false. I would guess that would be a more modern thing because of the modern flat earth revival, but 17th century is still significantly after Columbus. So I could see that being true as well. I don't know. Yeah, it's, um, a while after so so it sounds true but we'd be even more inclined to see 18th century right i don't know i i i could go either way on it i could explain away either answer who is claiming that columbus overturned it because i thought it was well known even in his time so why would he need to overturn it but there, it, there definitely is like that myth of like Columbus proved that there, or he sailed to prove that the earth was round because he thought he was going to India. So like, I, I definitely have heard that as like this apocryphal thing. I just don't know if it's when it originates from. So Susan said that um, you said the 18th century, wouldn't it be the 19th century if we're going to say this is... Um, more modern yeah because that's when that flat earth crap started yeah so the question could be right wrong i mean it could be the only thing that's wrong with the question is the century it could be the night yeah the 19th century because we just learned in the we just were reminded in the previous category that that, that was written in the 1800s but i do but Kelly, though, because I he I've heard that same thing about Christopher Columbus proving that the earth wasn't flat. Um, I mean, I think, like you said, Brian, I think that was a notion that was around when he was in, in 1492. When he no, said, no, 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 so we put false. That's not the case. So I think that's the myth that goes around is that like in 1492, they expected that the earth was flat and then Columbus proved it wrong. But it was already fairly... No, it is round at that point. So, so, so the answer would be, if you wanted to make it true, it would be the claim that Columbus overturned the idea of a flat Earth dates from the 19th century. So, okay. but the 17th century is still like pretty significantly after he sailed over. So it would still be like a originating after his time. So I could see it being true as well. Well, I'm the know. visitor here, so whatever you go. So why don't we do? Why back. don't we do? Thumbs up for true, thumbs down for false. Oh, okay, three. The question again, so on, I know how we'll, I answer. We'll just take a vote. One on on. Uh, I'll go one, two, three, and do it on four. One, two, three. Okay, then we'll go with false. I really was too conflicted to even vote. I'm trying to think ah. about if I answered my question right. The claim that we can come back in the 19th century. So that would make this wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I we can like, change our mind. I feel like seven should be false, but I can't think of what else would cause it. Friction with the air is not what causes re-entering spacecraft to get hot. No idea. I'm thinking the same thing, Kelly. I, I think it's false too, but I don't know why. Well, we've always heard that it's re-entering the atmosphere and the atmosphere is air. Yeah, but is it not the friction? Is it something else about entering the atmosphere? But of course, then if it's the air, it should burn all the way down until. How about the dome that's over the planet? <laughs> they open a little hole and it comes through and. Oh. Is it something about the speed? Like once it gets down to. It's, is it something about pressure? The sudden change in pressure? No. Well, how fast does the space shuttle go? On, on re-entry it's just coasting in right i would guess true what would you guys guess i'm not even gonna guess i would have no we idea. must we must guess you're on our team susan. No, 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 I'm a visitor. on our team i'm a visitor no, no you're taking leonard's place susan you gotta you, got, oh, you oh, have to be leonard well, uh, <laughs> let me tell you the answer it depends on how you want to look at this 
Um, well, to be exact, I can't vote because I'm. You limited. need to have a, a, a bit of my questions. Bit of mischievous in that mischievism in the voice. I have to practice. I lean towards true, but I don't. I can't come up with a reason why. So then that makes me think. I don't know. Let's. Shall we move on or? Yeah, let's go on and come back to it. I lean as a woman with one leg shorter than the other. But up, up. Einstein disputed quantum <laughs> entanglement because it violated his special theory of relativity. True or false? False or true? No idea. I no idea. I don't know. Okay. Number false. nine. The word schizophrenia comes from the Greek words for to split and mind. True. True. Okay. True. Number 10, tailoring instruction to an individual student's learning style improves outcomes. False. Knowing false. Leonard, I'm betting that's false. It's, it's false. absolutely false. It is absolutely false. I think I read it. I just saw a Skeptoid do, uh, episode on it recently. Okay, yeah, so we need one, Skeptoid seven, and eight. Oh, we have three we don't know? One, seven, and eight. Well, we okay. have a 50 50 chance. So. I have a coin to flip if we'd like to. Friction, Einstein. Copernicus. And what was number one? Copernicus. Copernicus book. Oh, good old Copernicus. I have no idea for one. Flip no the coin, baby. Five. All right. I'm flipping a coin for one. You ready? Wait, which one is which? Tails is going to be true because it starts with T. Oh, well. We're but it's heads. So we're going to go with false on number one. Okay. Unless anybody has any objections. And I'll make note of that so we can see just what the heck, you know, how it worked out with those. See, I, okay, no. Let's... Wait, wait, do you have a second giving on that? No, it's all good. All right, number seven, should I flip a coin or do we want to reason this one out? Flip a coin and then we'll reason them out once we have answers for everything. Okay. <laughs> seven is tails, so we're going to go true. Okay, because last time we went in with two, with a blank. Mm -hmm. We didn't go in with a blank. Yeah, it was the second fiddle question with Oh, I, I thought we did Jack Benny for that. that. I had Costello friction. down because it was the only. You know what? You guys said that friction on number seven. You guys seem to think that it was false, right? I lean towards the friction thing being false, but I couldn't think of a reason Gary why. Said the same thing, true. right? I lean, I lean towards true because that the friction, friction is false. false. Yeah. <laughs> you, I lean. You, I lean. Friction is not the cause. I lean but towards our answer being true because but I couldn't give a good reason why. Well, then go with what you think. Yeah. Well, we don't trust the coin myself. flip anyway. Is yeah, true. anyway, the coin flip said true, so we can go back to it and think about it. Number eight, I'm flipping a coin. Well, we could actually talk about that because quantum entanglement violates the speed of light, but I didn't know he disputed that. I thought he just didn't like the fact that there's the universal constant. Well, I guess a, that's the question. Did he dispute it? it? It, I'm pretty sure it does violate special relativity and that's the issue of unification. Uh, but the question is, did Einstein dispute it? I don't think he- I need to sit here and look very intelligent. I mean, it exists. So did, <laughs> I don't think he, I don't know. Did he dispute know. that it actually exists? Is that the question? Yeah, the question is whether he disputed it. I think. And is that why he disputed it? So well, did he it dispute it because the, the whole thing? Yeah, yeah. Well, it I, both parts. I, I think my, good. my point is that quantum entanglement does not mess. So how, how badly did I mess everybody up? You <laughs> have us like questioning our questions about questions. This, it, 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 it's, it's a little tricky. There's three well, we don't I, have. I can give justification for both answers for every single one, and not every <laughs> single one of them, but for-, well, I, for I, I, I can guarantee you they are all absolutely either unequivocally <laughs> true or unequivocally false. Yeah, I can- uh, I, Yeah, I'm talking about like trying to reason false. it out. I, I can't reason it out. I can guarantee that. The- uh, True or false. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you there. Thank you. The- um, uh, the, the wording is, well, the, the goal was not to make it, have everyone get a 10. So they're- You're they're, aiming for a seven? 
I was aiming for a seven. We'll see how close. It's so hard to know whether we're falling for the misconception or we actually know something. That is exactly (laughs) what I was going for. I think it's a misconception that we know anything in this 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 category. But no, as as a skeptic, I understand that uh, mindset. Well, that's like with number seven. I can just picture you explaining to us what it actually is causing. Oh, don't worry, I I will. Of any, I I was trying to. (laughs) Don't worry, I will. I was trying to use my voice of Leonard to explain it. My voice of Leonard sounds nothing like that. <laughs> I yeah, I don't know why all. your Leonard voice is so deep, Susan. Yeah, my <laughs> voice is, well, okay. Leonard's voice is getting very oddly sounding. Deep. Yes, I, Leonard, quite, I, just wanna, deep. I just want to say thank you for hauling out. So I can't believe you pulled that one yeah. out. Yeah, it was the only, only, uh, um, duo that sounded right for that time all of time those frame. i would never have thought of them yeah i was uh, sure it was carpenters uh they yeah they no they were uh they weren't all that popular oh come on were, carpenters no by that year they were popular oh. earlier hall and oats what did they even do uh music they were a duo i know i know who they are let's let's uh let's get Get yeah. back to the really good question. We need questions. to answer for eight, guys. Eight. And you're saying we're all happy on number four? True. Uh, well, that's, I'm sort of happy I, with it. But it's either true know. or false. We're trusting true. you on that one, Brian, I, I, for number four. Number four is true. Number eight, I will guess true. <laughs> or we can roll the dice, the die. You want then, it to be five true and five false, wait, was, then eight wait, would wait. be false. What was Kelly's explanation for number eight? No, well, so my thought is like quantum entanglement does not mesh with special relativity. So right. the question is just whether Einstein disputed it or not. And I don't, he, I, I don't think he disputed it. I know it didn't make him happy, but I don't think he ever claimed it was wrong. Yeah. I would lean towards false on that as well. Okay. Not only that, gives us five and five. Five false, five true. One, I do okay we win. We win. Six. I have different answers then. Can oh no, we don't. say them? I have false, 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 true, true, false, true, false, true, false. And I lied. We, we and, the ones, and the ones we um, rolled the die for were one and seven. Now that we have an answer for every one, one would people like to go back to one and seven and discuss them further? I don't. I'm all on notes by uh, Wikipedia page. I don't have anything <laughs> new to add to anything I've said for one or seven, I'm just conflicted. But I, I feel like Leonard's just waiting to explain why it's not friction for number seven. So I lean towards true for that one. Yep. Good team. Good. Yeah, that would be a more fun answer for him to, if it yeah. was. Yeah. I think he would enjoy busting a misconception. Carrie, can I see the pillow behind your head? What is that? Is this your family? Yeah. Uh, well, sort of. I'll yeah. let Brian explain what this is. Magic Christmas. Brian and oh, the, the Magic Christmas Elf. It's a video uh, I made. No, no, this. just my, Magic Christmas Elf. It doesn't say Brian, sorry. And the journey. Oh, oh shall we head back? Yeah. I was no. asking about our pillow. So what is it? Yes, yeah, we're, we're good, Leonard. Oh, this one's Brian. That's the most important thing. Oh, I would have. I would have. And, that's me. and I see wow. a Magic Christmas Elf. Is the video I made with a student about a magic Christmas elf that comes to teach this poor buggeredly guy the true meaning of Christmas, which gets completely fucked up. I'm sure that wasn't part of the video. That... <laughs> it's very cute. It's a cute little... Carl's kitty, 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 kitty. Adorable. It was an adorable uh, pillow, though. Why is it it's an ador- Guess who the, the buggerly guy was played by? Me. Which buggerly? Let me see him. I, I meant, the, I the, the guy that has a thinning hairline here. His I, name is Brian. I oh, well, we know that Brian. It was supposed to be curmudgeonly, not buggerly. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's cute. <laughs> I love handcrafted things like that. Look at Carl's kitty. Kitty, kitty. He's getting a belly rub. I don't know how much explanation people are going to want on these answers. (laughs) Uh, 
but uh, I like that category, Leonard. I liked it. Good. It was fun. Okay, so number one. Kyle's upside down too. How did you do that? <laughs> You're turning your computer monitor? Copernicus's book cited the ancient Greek Aristarchus as inspiration for the idea of heliocentrism. That is false. Oh. Although he did get the idea from Aristarchus, and it was included in some of the early drafts of his book, the published version did not mention it. Number two. Many ancient Greek statues were originally brightly colored is true. No. Yes. Oh, no. say yeah. more about that. Say more, please. No. There are only a few examples where it uh, they have been preserved in volcanic eruptions and the like. But uh, the documentation at the time, the descriptions of the statues, they were brightly colored and quite elaborate. <clears throat> well, unfortunately, wow. our teammate was drunk the entire time she was there, so we got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell. <laughs> yeah, she said she was drunk the whole time. It's, I found this. On, I found this out on a tour of Pompeii, and it's one of those things. She, you know, there's a, there's a thing that tour guide just makes shit up, where they're told yeah. stuff that's wrong. So I, I didn't know. I know I was told that, but I didn't know if that was true. Yep, it's true. Um, Number three, the forbidden fruit in the Bible is explicitly said to be an apple. False. That is false. Yay. It is just said we, to be. We all know it was a Commodore. It is said, <laughs> to, be the, oh. said to be the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. In, in, either way, we agree it had an R6502 in it. Seems like it'd be more likely to be fig anyway, since they're wearing fig leaves and all that. This... So you're saying it was a Z80? <laughs> number Jeff, four video on mike so this one is is a, a common misconception which is that microwave ovens primarily and preferentially heat water they actually heat anything that has a uh, significant dipole moment in the molecule and they are not tuned to any of the um, rotational or vibrational modes of water so Just that false. is false. Hey, I have a question on that. Yes. Why do microwaves affect metals? Oh yeah. That's a a long just a long um, <laughs> explanation, but basically too. microwaves right. are electromagnetic waves. So the um, yeah, there's there's no easy way to to describe it quickly. Okay. Leonard will not give you a simple but wrong answer. That's right. <laughs> uh, on average, a 21 year old in the Middle Ages lived to about 65. True. So there is a big difference between a uh, typical lifespan and life expectancy at birth. Life expectancy at birth was 30 to 40. But once you got past the hump of infant mortality and childhood diseases, you were likely to live to a ripe old age. That was true. So that one's Yay. true. I wouldn't we, say 65. We don't get it and I told you so. <laughs> you, may, you may say that 65 is not right, but it in fact is. No, I'm saying um, 65 is not right. Ah, well, it, 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 for as someone, who is, as someone who is 66, <laughs> um, given what most people think of as the typical age for people in the Middle Ages, 65 is ancient. And I can understand why that would be considered. The claim that Columbus overturned the idea of a flat earth dates from the 17th century is true. Oh. Thank you, Kyle. Number seven, friction with the air is not what causes re-entering spacecraft to get hot. That is true. Yes. As things come barreling into the atmosphere, they compress the air in front of it. And if you've ever pumped up a bicycle tire, you know that when you compress air, it gets hot. Yes. That's where the heat comes from. I remember hearing that and I was astounded that it wasn't friction and I didn't remember the cause, but thank you. Why is you are going to that down? <laughs> Kelly. Number eight, 
Einstein disputed quantum entanglement because it violated his special theory of relativity. There were lots of interesting discussion about this. Um, not only did Einstein know about quantum entanglement, but the uh, paper that brought quantum entanglement to the uh, forefront of physicist knowledge was written by Einstein. It's called the EPR paper. It was written by uh, it was uh, written by three physicists, Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen, and they brought up something called the EPR paradox, which said that. Um, quantum entanglement was ridiculous and impossible, but he never thought it violated the special theory of relativity, and it doesn't. So that is false. Yay. Got it right for the wrong reasons. Number nine. <laughs> so lots of people think that schizophrenia means split personality. It doesn't. It has nothing to do with split personality, but it does come from the words to split and mind. <laughs> What is being split from the mind in schizophrenia is reality itself. Mm -hmm. And 10, although it is taught in teachers colleges and mm -hmm. most teachers think it's true, number 10 is false. Not this yeah, teacher. Who? Not the teachers in your group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not surprised at that at all. Um, so the, the, the primary reason they think that teaching style has, does not have a uh, significant outcome, uh, effect on outcomes, is what's most important, although teaching styles do exist, people do have, some people are better at visualizing things than others, but the, the modality of, of instruction that works best depends on the subject matter. I mean, if you're trying to explain art history, then you know auditory learning is not going to help. Uh, nope. So it's fairly, fairly straightforward. Uh, you will notice that there are exactly five false and exactly five true. Um, I uh, actually found a random number generator <laughs> um, and picked them and just picked random numbers until I got half and half and then manipulated the questions to match. Uh, Terry, <laughs> Terry picked up on that. We should have went with, with that notion, Terry. Terry. True, but you know what? I don't know that those That's have been coin tosses, though. The but I did, uh, I was, but That's I was true. careful not to have, um, I did pick the, I actually got a, used a random number generator to make sure I didn't get long runs, but three in a row, true is probably something that a human would be unlikely to do. All right, thank you. Thank Good you. Job, Leonard. Thank you, Leonard. Nice Good job, Leonard. Unfortunately, Good we're all going to go read Great that page now, and you can't do this category again. But it's <laughs> a really good category for a future. Let me uh, let me put the link to the Wikipedia page in. That's very good. So, and there are many, many, many more that I did not include. Okay, so I'm going to put that in my notes. So, is the invention of the microwave actually the chocolate bar? We were discussing whether or not that was apocryphal or not. Uh, huh? With the radar tron. Well, they they knew that microwaves heated things. Right. Um, and there's a and for lots of modern communication technology, the ability to make microwaves inexpensively uh, was important. And once they had the ability to make hmm. microwaves. Uh, they uh, used it. Oh, I like that. I'm reading the page. I like that they, they have the MSG thing is bullshit because I remember living through that. Yeah. Yes. All right, so yeah, it's a good, it's a good page. All right. Oh, the team was seven. <laughs> non applicable. What's your score? Eight. Okay. So you got more yeah. than in all the other categories. Now, it's all because of Adrian. Adrian joined us. So there you go. <laughs> We're tied for first place, you guys. Should we stop now with the score? I'm dropping, a, I'm dropping a relevant song in the chat. Okay. Pyramid UFOs for five-year-olds. Is it from George Robb before I even look at yeah. it? Yes, it is. Of course it is. The misconception song. The Weeping yeah, Angel Food one. Cake. Six. Not good. Uh, the Earth Day finally joins AARP. Seven. Schrodinger's cat, scratch fever. Nine. 
Mm. Well, we have the so far winner. Um, that damn cat. <laughs> you guys should choose your names with some, some more pride that it's going to win, that you're going to win. 15, 20, 15, then 19, then 20, then 22, and 24. All righty, all righty, Rue. Caspian's all geared up and ready to go. And Rob, don't, oh, oh wait, uh, Leonard, make sure you remind me to put you in the room. I think okay. I Caspian. was in the right one when it ended. Yeah. Okay. I think you ended in our room. So Caspian, yeah. is it going to be left-handed Nigerian <laughs> rugby players again? Princess. Oh man, does that mean Susan's on our team now? Jesus. <laughs> 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 No. Love you too, Paula. You're my favorite. Hamilton, aim for her luggage when you get it. You get it he will. Don't worry about it. You don't have to remind him. Ariadne will puke in there too. So you better watch no, out. No, Ariadne's fine. <laughs> She'll leave you a little prize to take home with you. So, category four is a forbidden topic. All right. A forbidden forbidden topic? topic? A and forbidden topic. Three, two, Lombata. the Lombada. Is All it right. Bike Club? Question one About how many buildings are in the Forbidden City in Beijing? 50, 500, 1,000, or 2,000? Question two. How many Academy Awards did the 1956 film Forbidden Planet win? You have a choice between zero and four inclusive. Question three. In which decade of the 20th century was the Index Librorum Prohibitorum, the list of prohibited books by the Roman Catholic Church, discontinued? Question four, what US state was the first to enact a widespread public smoking ban in 1975? Question five, what month contains banned books week in the United States? Question six, what are you not allowed to do to Han Solo? Question seven. What prohibited action caused Pete Rose to be permanently banned from professional baseball in 1989? Question eight. What English heavy metal band and member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame released an album titled Forbidden in 1995? Question nine. About how many counties in the United States prohibit the sale of alcohol? One, 25, or 100? And question 10, The Forbidden Journey is an amusement park ride for what media franchise? Any questions? You're gonna have to tell us where you came up with this topic. I think this looks good. I'm, confu I'm confused forbidden. about six. Would this be something evident from the films or is this sort of a, a fan franchise joke? This is something that would be evident from the films. Okay, thank you. This is a cool topic, Caspian. Thank you. I think and in you fact, have... I can tell you that the idea came to me from a question that I did not ask. I took it off because I found I decided it was too difficult. Oh. So, wait, so the idea to... came to you to do a forbidden category from a question that you didn't, you started to write that said it was too hard? That doesn't make any sense. Wait, the forbidden category has a forbidden question? This is true. 
we might be able to forgive you for your last category after this. Yeah, the, the, the average is right about in the middle. That's very good. <laughs> this, is, this is really good. Okay, all right, let's go to our rooms. Um, so I need to, well, we've got an assigned. How did that happen? Oh, Jamie goes to four, the Weeping Angel. And Dave, where were you in? Which room? I was with Kevin's group, I guess. You're this Schrodinger cat scratch fever people. Okay. All right. So good job. Um, who? Leonard is in the right group. Okay, good. We're all in the right groups now. <laughs> You're being recorded, so act right. We are very, very urban, civilized group here. Oh, well, good thing we're, I'm here and recording. Okay, so welcome to, to hello team. All right. The I have week. very little idea about any of these questions. <laughs> <laughs> but they look like they're reasonable. Me too. Yeah, um, maybe we can figure it out. The Forbidden City. Is Jamie keeping score? Yes. Yep. No. Yeah. How many buildings are in there? Well, first okay. one, anyone any have any idea? I've not been there, but I bet you it's a lot. I'm thinking 500. No, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was guessing. 500, There's I think. Definitely more than 50 buildings. Yeah. yeah, I would go more. This It's more helpful from an aerial view than having walked through it. I. Oh, you've been there? Think you can. I've been there. Okay, so go for it, girl. How many? <laughs> I don't know. We, I didn't well, you, count you're the closer than we are. Anybody <laughs> else been there? What are I the don't options? Think being there is helpful. 50, I think 500, 1,000, or 2,000. I would go more towards 1,000 because that, that'll include the tiny, any kind of tiny building, too, right? They're going to have yeah. outhouses, don't they? No, not necessarily. Well, they didn't go boop number two there. I like the garden the best. And it's huge open. The center is open, but no idea. I, I think we're no down. Way. How many? Okay. So, what are we going with? 500 or 1,000? I think 1,000. Okay. 750. The mic's not going to pick. Okay. Yeah. Okay, number two. I think it's four because I don't, I'm pretty sure Forbidden Planet won technical awards. No idea. Oh, I think, yeah, I would have said zero. I don't know of any awards that it won. And this I, is the original. You don't think it won anything for effects? Well, like special effects awards, like uh, the kind that Star Wars won started like the year before Star Wars came out. So I don't know, because the original Forbidden Planet, wasn't that the- That precedes Star Wars. 50? Yeah. Late 50. Yeah, the, the special effects award wasn't a category until the oh. year before Star Wars came when out. When did they start the doing seven. costuming awards? Mm. I, I don't know, I can't pinpoint anything exactly, but I feel like- I just don't know, I, I don't know. I feel we'll, like we'll come back to that one. Okay, question three. I think it was quite recent. Me too. So it'd be like uh, I think it's the 90s. I took my notes, but apparently I don't get the chat. Oh, so I read it to her. But um, three? Yeah, in what decade of the 20th century was the index liberorum prohibitorum? Oh, list of prohibited books by the Roman Catholic Church. This no idea. So you think it was the nineties? I think it was recently. Because I think I remember hearing about it. Going, wait, you guys still allow that? What do you mean? You're just now getting rid of that? It seems like I remember hearing that. So do we think it's the nineteen nineties or the nineteen eighties, the seventies? I was thinking of maybe Pope John the Twenty Third with his liberalization policies. And what decade would that have been? Oh. The fifties. That's fine with me. I got nothing on this one. I, I mean, that's the only connection that I can think of. It, yeah. When was Vatican II? 
Yeah, Vatican II was in the 50s, right? With the 50s or 60s with Pope John the 23rd. I wish I knew for sure which decade. So do we. We wish you knew too. Thanks. <laughs> Love you, Paula. 50s or 60s? I'm giving you a I little like hard. I like 60s. A lot of everything was changing in the 60s. So maybe yeah, 60s. I like the 60s too. 60s? Yeah, let's say 60s. Okay, question four. State the first ban smoking. I have no idea. When US, what U.S. state was the first? It wasn't North Carolina. I know that. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't I think it was Oregon either, because in the seventies, we had smoking and non-smoking areas. Yeah, we did too until the nineties. I 90s think at least. Yeah, maybe Hawaii. Uh, no idea. Uh, couldn't be Utah, could it? Oh, that's good. Uh, no, yeah, they don't like smoking, right? No, I don't yeah, Mormons, I can see yeah. Utah doing the it. Mormons, they don't like anything. Yeah, the Mormons. <laughs> that's as that's a as good a guess as any. I would. Think. I think that's probably more right because. Yeah. Uh, what else would it be? I mean, not. Alaska. It's going to go for Vermont. Nothing rural. A rural rural area wouldn't do it. Vermont. I think it's more likely Utah. Utah. I think Jamie's right. Yeah, I think Jamie's right. I'm taking a guess. Well, I think it's a good guess. Yeah. It, it could be anything arbitrary. I, think it work. I mean, who the hell knows? In 75, I don't know. Somebody does. Caspian does, and he's right here. And I'm, I'm just thinking that in 75, the scientific consensus hadn't been fully established with all those cases. So it had to be a religious reason that was driving it. And Mormons probably are the most powerful. Yeah, and they had all the they had all the politicians that would have helped push it along. My too. only thing is, is would they already have had it banned? Well, it says the first. Well, this said the first, so the state. Yeah, okay. Uh, what month contains banned books week? I think it's July. You should know. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen. Okay, they blur together. <laughs> you Are you a librarian? The, she works. Me? She's in the library business. Yeah. Uh huh. I did might be you, wrong entirely. Do you Would remember you setting up a, a shelf of uh, I don't, books? You have to have a master's to do that. Oh, well, can you remember <laughs> seeing one? I see many of them. A little, no, an area where somebody said, and books. <laughs> Mom, yeah, we have what week. time of the year was it? She says, I like, I <laughs> But the problem is I've been there so long, the time blurs together. Yeah. We've got Ben Book, we've got Library, we've got Library Workers Appreciation Week, we've got the Historical Month. Literary I, I, I'm fine with July. I and no it's not time. in the fall. Who said I've, July? I mean, somebody said July and seemed to know Jamie what they were did. talking about. Okay, so then let's That go was ahead. Jamie. Yeah. July. And I was thinking back to school month. No. September, October. Don't talk us out of it. I think October. This is good. October, November. Okay, I have no idea. Okay. Number six. What are you not allowed to do? To never tell them the odds. Oh, oh right. Oh, what? Right. Jamie's right. Uh, yeah. Never, yeah. Tell never, never, never tell him the odds. Romero, that is too weird. You're looking off to the side, talking, just talking, just. <laughs> See, he's like looked over there, was talking, which would be my doorway. Like somebody came in. That was weird. <laughs> like that. See? That looked like. And you look over and there. I looked at my doorway to see who was coming in my door. <laughs> who was there? Because I know Mark's in bed. Mark's in bed and my cat's, the door is wide open. No, that was just weird. <laughs> you totally faked That's her funny. out, Romero. That's so yeah. funny. <laughs> I'm like, what's he looking at? Who's he talking to? Who's there? There's nobody there. Oh my God, there's nobody there. Uh, what prohibitive action caused? Okay, this is gambling, right? Gambling. Yeah. Gambling. But, no. I mean, do we have to be specific? It was gambling in his own games or gambling in baseball, not just. Yeah, it's just gambling games. baseball. Adding, he was, yeah. I think it's probably gambling because it says we're prohibitive action, which is gambling would be enough, right? An well, no, he, he, he on his own game? Pardon? Was he gambling on his own games? That's what I thought. Well, he was gambling, and there are some 
Mar no, I don't think he was gambling on his own, but I think it was, a, we think he, they, I don't think that was proved, but I think he was gambling on baseball games. I'm just going to say is. gambling. But gambling is a good enough answer, right? I'm looking at Caspian. Yeah. He's still in here. He just came back. Okay. What English heavy metal band, a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, released an album titled Forbidden? In 1995. No idea. I read the questions so you guys get the answer. English heavy metal mm. bands. Um... The youngest one here must answer this. That the might younger. be surprising. <laughs> well, that rules me out. Um, it rules me out. <laughs> that might rule me out. That's okay, wait, the English heavy metal band and member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. For no reason, I, I don't know anything about uh, heavy metal bands and so on. But, but I couldn't name a heavy metal band. No, I, the 1995. name that came to my mind is Axel Rose. Are they English? Uh, no, no, oh, he's, he's American. American. Uh, they're American. What, what year again? 65, 95. 95. 95. 95. I see 95. Unforgiven. Uh... Guns and Roses? No, no, no. no Guns and Roses. <laughs> Guns yeah, if you want to, I want to see. Get into What's his friend. face? Uh, was he still a member of Black Sabbath? Or did Guns he have Ozzy Osbourne? At that point, Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, no, he didn't have anything called Forbidden. Are you thinking of Black? No, Black I'm Black asking Sabbath. if was he still part of Black Sabbath? That, wasn't that, uh, that year wasn't that older, like the '80s? And he's. Uh, Wait, what year was this? 1995. 1995. I'm pretty sure Ozzy. No. Ozzy was broken up by that. Okay. English heavy metal band. They still existed after Ozzy, but I don't. I don't think Black Sabbath is English. Well, Ozzy is. Uh, no, they're English. Us? They're English. Well, Who else is English? That Black Sabbath. I don't. I don't have a, I it's Too early. Uh, Black Sabbath was older, like the eighties. Yeah, but Ozzy Osbourne used to be a member of it, but then he split and he became his own. Yeah, act. but that was still the 80s. That doesn't mean, it's not like, it, since humans exist, uh, chimpanzees should be extinct. You're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Black Sabbath went on after uh, Ozzy Osbourne. I know, but they didn't have anything. How do you know? Can you name any of their albums? No. Which is the point. <laughs> they didn't really go anywhere and do anything. Well, I guess they could have yeah, still you didn't released know, you an don't album. Know about them. <laughs> Why are we thinking it's Black Sabbath? Can't because it's the only else? heavy metal so that's band. That's the British heavy metal band I can think of. I'm not sure Caspian would put them under heavy metal. Black Sabbath? What would he put them under? Soft metal. I know Jethro Tull, <laughs> one for the Island, metal, and they Jethro are not Tull. heavy metal. Jethro Tull is not heavy metal. But they won an award for well, best he heavy be metal. Wearing, he's got a flute. He wouldn't have. He wouldn't be hot heavy metal. No, I know this is not Jethro Tull. Okay. Which was an answer on an earlier uh, trivia night. Forbidden. I don't know. Okay. How well, let's, what's the next on? one? What's the next one? About how many counties in the United States prohibit the sale of alcohol? One, I'm very sure 100. this is more than one. I, I, can you repeat the numbers amount? One, Sorry. 25 or 100. I know that there's one in Arkansas. In, um, Lee's County has no alcohol. It Arkansas has no alcohol. Our county right here just changed that. When I was working in Polk County, it was... Monmouth was a dry, oh wait, Monmouth was a dry town, but I don't think Polk County, the county well, like itself in, in, was dry. Yeah, I think in it's closer south, to 100. Yeah, I think it's closer to 100. A lot of counties in the south, when you look at the maps, the counties are really tiny. It's not like here on, oh, the, on the west coast. Okay, we they're are really running out of time. And we're running out of time. There's so a lot in Arkansas, in Georgia. So, so and let's go to 100. Is to 100. Park ride for what media franchise? What are we putting for nine? 25 or 100? 100. 100. 100. 100. The Forbidden 100. Journey is an amusement park ride for what media franchise? 
How about, about Star Disney, Wars? It, well, there's Disney, there's Universal, there's MGM, Those there's art franchises. Yeah, well, you got 20 seconds to come up with something. 20 19, seconds. 17. Quick. I'm putting uh, Star Wars. Okay, put Star Wars. And for eight is Black Sabbath. We're putting Black Sabbath. Yeah, put that. Yes, and we need zero or four for Forbidden Planet. Four. Yeah. Just because I grabbed a number because it's real. <laughs> and a little flavor crystals. Yeah. Probably should have. It was a brand name. Okay, I hope this was more enjoyable than last week's. Oh interview. my God. It's I a universe. Last week's. I didn't do well, but I liked it. Then you'll be pleased about my next category, the French Wars of Religion. No. No. I wasn't here. What was last week? I would <laughs> like that one better. English okay. Civil War. Oh. What is it? Oh. I would like the English Civil War. Oh, one. I knew you would. Yes, were. you would have loved it, Paula. You mentioned that. You are the only one. But I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned yeah, nothing. Video. There's a video. If you, you ask me all the questions again, I would still get them all wrong. I learned yeah. a bunch of stuff that I didn't remember. The thing, was, things I don't care about, I don't remember even when I hear the answers. It's weird. Yeah, I, I heard many things that I did not know, but I didn't learn any of them. Yeah. <laughs> There's a video, you guys, you can rewatch it over and over. Yeah, that's true. Oh, like, not do really something. should. They're hilarious. Well, the, what, what was this? It, Jamie had that, uh, the, the, that oh, leader's I title. I don't think what was that leader's title, Jamie, that you talked about last week and it had that weird name the what? grand inquisitor the grand yeah it was like the grand inquisitor but it wasn't that the um, witch finder Donald's general so, yes and some i heard somebody talking about that this week i couldn't believe yeah. it i would never heard of it before <laughs> you know what i did too i didn't even know what you guys were really talking about and then i saw it came up on a um a skeptoid episode it was what's skeptoid. the name what's That's the name right. of that phenomenon what's skeptoid. the name of that phenomenon yeah and there's a name for that yeah yeah Mm. Coincidence. Coincidence. Oh, oh you're oh, kidding. Oh, coincidence? That's a coincidence. I almost said coincidence. Shall we? No. Okay. I thought we'd just argue for a while. So, that comes later. question one How many buildings are in the Forbidden City? According to Wikipedia, which is the source I'm relying on here, the answer is 980. Jesus. Oh, well, that wasn't thousand. one of the choices. Well, so the is about a how many buildings? Okay. So a thousand. Yay! Hey, <laughs> guess. Oh, Question we two: now? How many Academy Awards did Forbidden Planet win? Zero. Damn it! Oh, Damn. Thank you, Paul. It was nominated for one. I believe it was special <laughs> effects. Special effects. I thought it won that one. Uh, the winner was the Ten Commandments. Oh, that looks so bad now. I just watched that. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> watched it? Recently? Yeah, they always play it at Passover Easter time, and I always watch the middle part with the parting of the Red Sea. And every year it looks worse and worse. But Forbidden Planet, that holds up. The amount of times effects. I've seen that movie is like kind of. Question three The Index Librorum Prohibitorum was discontinued in the 1960s. Oh, yeah. Good job, Mono and, and Paula. Um, I think it was Mono and Paula. Yeah. <laughs> I picked the 90s. So did Question we. four. <laughs> the first US state to enact a widespread public smoking ban was Minnesota. What? Yeah. Ooh, we got that. When was that? Yay. 1975. Wow, Minnesota? Well, that's close to, it's close to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, Utah. Said Utah. It borders it, doesn't it? <laughs> and it was the Norwegians and not the Mormons. <laughs> I don't believe it has anything to do with Mormons, no. Question five. What month contains banned book week in the United States? It is the last week of September. Damn it. Yay. Oh, you're right. Yay. Sorry. Question six. Caspian. Caspian, is it related to any any other significance that you know of in September? Nothing that I know of. Back to school. No, I think it might have to be other. Question six. What are you not allowed to do to Han Solo? Never tell him the odds. Yes. Yay. <laughs> hey, Kelly. Good job, you guys. Question seven. Pete Rose was permanently banned from professional baseball because he placed bets on baseball games. Yep. yep. 
And he probably stays banned because he lied about it repeatedly. Yes. Question eight. The English heavy metal band that released an album titled Forbidden in 1995 was Black Sabbath. <laughs> yes! Thank God. Yes! Ooh, wow. I, can name, I can remember one. <laughs> oh. that, that Look at Isabella. Awesome. Awesome. She looks like she's four. Look at her. She looks like she's four years old sitting in that chair. How old were they? A hundred years old? Isabella, you are like a little tiny pea sitting on a pod in a in a I don't see Isabella, so I don't like she's, she's, can't even find her. She's hiding screen. behind her name. She's not on my screen. Yes, she's, she's right there. Yes, she is. She looks like she's in Zoom. No, <laughs> Susan, the screens are different in Zoom. There's two screens there on my screen, is. and she's not on my screen. But she was leaning there, back. I'm very she tired. She's tiny. Oh Good Look night, there. Isabella. Bye. <laughs> Question Bye. nine. Bye. I had a very difficult time finding an exact number and what constitutes a dry county is still pretty confusing. But the answer I'm looking for is about 100. Yay. Yay. This is totally legal under the 21st Amendment. Counties can prohibit the sale of alcohol. Wow. And question 10. This is an abbreviated name. The actual name of the ride is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Oh. Oh. Ah. Yeah, Susan, so what's the franchise? how dare you not know that? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> and and Jamie was on our team too. Shame on us. <laughs> Why should I know that? You're a Harry Potter fan. That doesn't well, mean I know anything about amusement parks. Yeah, and, and that is not part, I don't know where that name comes That's from. That's not canon. <laughs> that phrase is not part of the books. <laughs> Give me a break. I was right about like media stuff like Universal, like Disney parks and stuff like that, but I did not know you that. You had a time, otherwise we would have gotten that yeah. one. Right? <laughs> Harry Potter. I, I love the idea that you can take any scientific paper and put Harry Potter and the in front of the title of the paper. Oh boy. Oh, that's good. I haven't heard that. <laughs> wow. Harry Potter and the Revolutions of the Heavenly Spheres. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. So, oh, Harry Potter and the Corbomite Maneuver. <laughs> I don't think that's a scientific paper. Harry Potter and the Principia Mathematica. There you go. Harry Potter and Punch yeah. and Judy. That's my favorite. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't... Harry Potter and the Way to White bring Potter. the subject down, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Harry Potter and the Famous Lighthouses or Harry Potter and the English Civil Wars. <laughs> those, are not, those are not scientific papers. So I'm, I'm trying it Harry on some Potter real ones. Harry Potter and Joe's phone. Come out real good. What? what? Harry, Kyle? I'm trying it on some real papers. It's not as funny this Let's way. Let's say one. Uh, Harry Potter and Universal Language Model Fine Tuning for Text Classification. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's hysterical. <laughs> How about Harry Potter and the electrodyna on the electrodynamics of moving objects? Yeah. That, I think it's hilarious. You guys have Harry Potter and the feasibility of diploid by tetraploid crosses and humulus lupulus. <laughs> and now we brought this that That's easy for you to say, Janine. Easy for you to say. Oh, what funny. does that spell do? <laughs> yeah. How would you do it? It'd be it like, puts people to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so let's get our scores. N slash A, non applicable. How many points? Three. Ooh. Ouch. Oh. Damn. And I put I put Adrian on there to help bring the scores up. Yeah, so, my yeah. luck wore off. How do you think we got the three? <laughs> 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 hey, wait a minute! I knew the hand solo. Pyro pyramid UFOs for five year olds. Three. Oh man, is it really that bad? That was that oh, was we did well. Was on how can we get three? Um, the weeping angel food cake. Six. Oh. oh wait, no, that's the team I was on. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Earth Day joins AARP. Eight. Wow. Schrodinger's cat scratch fever. Nine. 
Whoa. Damn. Fucking Who oh. is it on your guys' team or is it a combination? That's scary. I guessed on the first one. And that's the only one I got. <laughs> <laughs> so we have 18, then 22, then 26, then 30, and 33. Wow. This, might be, this wind up means it might be the first time when one team has double another team score. I've never by, seen by this the end before. Of this. We'll see. So let's see what happens if, if somebody's going to be able to. Uh, oh, you mean total. The last category. Yes, I mean total. By the end of the game. Something we'll that see. everybody knows in one group, but nobody knows in the other. So let's see. We might get zero on the one and 10 on the other. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it'll do it, though. Um. Our category end is Brian, right? Where are you, Brian? There you are. Yep. Here you I've are. got one. And because I want everybody to like me, it's easy. Name 10 people who play trivia. Yeah. <laughs> we already like you, Brian. We already like you. Name so, 10 people who have played trivia. You want to get like you now. I already used that category. So oh. I, that was a great category, Mike. What did we do? It was it Rob? Did you do one where you gave us a list of twenty and we had to pick the ten, right? Yeah, I've done that before too. Yeah, yeah. people have done that. A lot of people have done that. I think. Okay, so that the time I saw it, and so I decided to do that as well. And the category tonight is highest selling movie soundtracks. Okay, and this is based on album sales, not streams. Okay. So highest selling movie soundtracks. Yep. On, and say, on the number of sales, not the amount of money, right? The number the units albums. the units sold. Okay. Units sold. Highest of any soundtrack timeline albums. like what's that? As of any timeline, like from the beginning of the I'm, I'm giving you a list soundtrack? of twenty. I'm giving you a list of twenty. Yeah. So I'll put it in the chat here. Oh, and then we have to choose 10 out of that. You have oh. to choose 10 out of the list. Oh, wow. okay. That makes sense. Oh, wow. I, I randomized it. generous. Is this the bonus round? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there's your list. Oh. Okay. Oh, wait. This what? is kind of easy. Yeah, you this is the easy. 10 out of this 20. And this to our room. This is good. I like this category. Of course you do. One. Of course you do. Kevin will be the one who does this. Okay. This is no, I, will, I only get about half of them. I won't oh, get all well, that's all we that's need. That's what you need. <laughs> no, but I need like five of ten. Oh, I'll, oh, get five. Okay. I'll get a right, solo. Here we go. Five. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go to Pyramids for five years old. Let's see what's who is this organized person who's put this up here? Is this Jeff? Look at that. Look at how, how neat that is. Susan, you're recording us. Yeah. yeah. It follows me where I go. Does that mean I can't use the F word? Oh, you can use it every other sentence if you want. I don't care. We're, it's, it's marked as not as a child's thing, so I don't care. Uh, only if it's I'll funny. Be good. I'll be good. <laughs> Oh. oh, I'll make an okay. effort. Anybody have any idea? Well, Saturday Night Fever, I think, yeah. has to be on the list. Yeah, yeah. I think Lion that's King a huge also. one. Um, Greece. I, I Greece. think the Lion King and Titanic. Oh, Greece, Greece has to be on the list. I'm surprised yeah. the sound of music's not there. It might be the 11th. The 21st. Top Gun? No. Titanic, yeah. You think Titanic? There's a soundtrack. Oh, good yeah, God. it was huge. It was really? hit and, yeah. What an appalling film. Uh the little I think any of the Disney things, like Little Mermaid, little Mermaid would be yeah. would have sold a gazillion. Little Mermaid. How about Purple Rain? Wait, wait, movies selling sound. I was surprised I went to see that movie twice and the ship still sunk. Do you think that would have <laughs> yeah. figured it out? No Hollywood ending oh, there. Look how neat this is. My God, look at how this well, rain is an interesting idea. But that Flash was a dance. massive Flash album, dance. but not necessarily a soundtrack, was it? Flash dance. Yeah, I think so. That was pretty big. How about Footloose? Purple Rain was a big album. But yeah, but it wasn't a movie. 
It was, was a movie, but I don't think the movie was well. It was okay. Footloose. Well, it was Purple Rain was Prince? No. Yes. Yeah. That that's uh, probably that. Probably how about, how about the, uh, I'd, I'd put it in. Alvita. Could don't be. Cry for me, Argentina. That's about the only line I know. Jazz singer. I, the only reason I think about the jazz singer is because of the length of time, but I don't I don't know if there's any except for maybe Matt Swanee or something like that. I don't know whether that would really well then there was that whole Neil oh, I gotta go let James and hold on a sec, I'll bring it back. There was the James got kicked out, so he's trying to rejoin, so I just gave him the link again to get it back in. So nothing really exciting. Here he is. I love this Facebook Messenger. Where'd you go, James? You are in, you're in not in, in A. Are you able to go there? Okay. Oh, I Susan Gilbert must be here. I love Space Jam, but I, I don't remember any music from it. I mean, I remember the music, but I don't know if anybody would buy the album. I bet Footloose is one of those. I've, I've never, never heard of Space Jam. Hey, well, people buy people buy rap albums. They'll buy anything. So I the think is Alan <laughs> Burn. I think but, Footloose is a, was a popular, popular movie that was all based but, on music. So I think this yeah, I I this kind of agree with that. There. Oh, this, you know what? List is um, the top twenty, right? No, this is the top. I don't know if ten are made up and ten are. He um, gave, he gave here, us twenty. Here. We picked ten. But did he um, pick? But are ten like? He gave us the top twenty, and we picked uh -huh. the top ten. So um, the, pure, it's got to be got to be pure country because the country people are nuts and they'll 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 they'll, they'll buy anything. So I I'll bet pure country <laughs> in there. We're recording this. Be nice. I will I will get yeah. you. Agree. I mean, it, it's more of a question of do we think that enough people who aren't in the country bought Richard? The what the is hell is, is that? Is that Eddie Amin? No, he doing in my I office? call it Khomeini. Get him out I, of my I, office. I think pure country is entirely possibly in the top 10. 
Yeah, because okay. I, I mean, it's a country. If it was, a, I don't know the thing, but it would have been a country hit probably, and that's a big audience. James, I've got all, oh, I've got all these uh, money from around the world. I make origami from, and that was one of them. I happen to have a picture of uh, you know, Ayatollah is, Khomeini. Oh, is that who that is? Okay, so we need one, two, three, four, five, need, six, seven, eight. So, so we need two. The bodyguard was huge. Whitney Houston was huge. Yeah. Was that his bodyguard? Oh, yeah. Cause she, what was the song? Um, I Will Always Love You. Yes, yeah. That's from it, was, it was huge. Oh. And it, huge. And it, written by Dolly Parton. Huge. Yeah, huge. I believe huge. that. Huge. 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 It doesn't, it begins with a Y. So how about Forrest Gump? Because they had all that really great music from the 50s and 60s, mainly the 60s, wasn't it? In the 70s? But I don't know how many people bought the soundtrack for that. Um, you know what? They, uh, I think of Vida with the Don't Cry For Me. I yeah. mean, that was, that was a big hit. See, I would go with <laughs> Oh Brother before I'd go with Evita. And I'd go with Purple Rain before I'd go with Evita. I would go with either. Now we're getting to the hard parts, huh? Yeah. Well, this is the Purple top Rain, just simply because it's Prince, is why I would take it. Well, it was a massive rec album. So, would the movie have made a bigger? I mean, you you've already got the album. Well, the, was the album the movie? You know, oh, it's an album. Yeah. 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 It was the soundtrack. The soundtrack. That so this movie. is not the album. You don't get to count the album numbers. But it is the the album is the soundtrack. Yeah. Right. Isn't the album the soundtrack? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. Okay, good. James. I, so I'd put maybe it on a technicality. Um, well, in other words, was there an album called Purple Rain from which there was a movie and then there was a soundtrack? Or was there a movie from which the album and the soundtrack are the same thing? I think it's the same thing as the movie and, it, and the album didn't come out until the movie came out. I'll buy that. Although I still think Oh Brother might be a better choice. I don't know Oh Brother at all. What is that? Uh, it's like the Coen Brothers. It's Purple really funny. Rain is, a Coen Brothers really film with some. You really should George watch Clinton. it, Alan. You George should. Clinton. You should introduce it to your child, Avi, too. He needs. He, you didn't raise him right if he doesn't know who Jack Benny is and Pat Benatar. Come on now. I. I. Well, I, I, sorry. I, I don't know that kid. You, you should be in. You should be in parent jail for that. I, well, and if he, yo, and if you don't know what oh brother where the, our thou is, then. Yeah, I don't know. I have I've never even heard that name. You better it's a movie. It's really good. It's about it's about the Odyssey, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's the Odyssey told in like the South. It's funny, but I can't even remember. I can't I, I only watch it once. I think I'll have to watch it again. Yeah, it's I good. will write that down. But does it have memorable music? Oh, very. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, what's the song? What is the famous song? Uh, of constant sorrow yeah it's like bluegrassy yeah yeah, yeah. there you uh, go sorrow that's yeah. really good avita oh we, we got to vote now for this wait are we only have nine, one right yeah we only got one spot left purple rain yeah, yeah. well purple um, rain yeah Part, well, part of it's like, part of it's like I, just, I just like Prince enough that I want Purple Rain to be on the list. That's how I feel. It's like how it may be wrong, but it should be right. Yeah. Footloose should be on there. I thought it was. Oh. They got taken huh. off when they put the bodyguard on there, I think. Now we have too many, right? Yeah. Well, I take the bodyguard off and put in Purple Rain. Or maybe pure country just to be spiteful to the country people. <laughs> uh, Titanic, really? Yeah, I guess it would be. Mm -hmm. oh. Again, it's like, you think about how big it was at the time when it came out. Now, Celine Dion, did she did not sing for the soundtrack, did she? I think she did, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. Was she yeah. on the soundtrack? I think yeah. she was on the soundtrack, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, that would, that's, you know. Yeah. Saturday Night Fever, The Lion King, Greece, Titanic, Little Mermaid. I'm looking to make sure that these all. No, are I'm, right. I'm almost positive Titanic's on there. I knew too many people who were too into it. Yeah. So, can we rethink The Little Mermaid for a minute? Yeah. yeah. Sure that that would be on there. 
I get Lion King. I don't get Little Mermaid. I'm not thinking yeah. of it. Well, I'm thinking Little, Little Mermaid. Mermaid Maybe yeah. too early. It was huge. Huge. It was well, huge. it has to be huge because it's on the top 20. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is it bigger than just to let just listen to it. Under the Sea is easily just, oh, hard. just to listen to is iconic. Love Robin them. Williams. Robin Williams as the uh, as the uh, the genie. Or oh, I got the wrong oh, song. That's, that's, the wrong show. that's the wrong movie. Oh, it's the wrong Aladdin. movie. That's right. Aladdin. It's Aladdin. Da, da, da. I would think Aladdin would have been on this. That was huge too. I'm surprised Frozen's not on this because Frozen's on everything. I'm well, shocked that Frozen's not on this. It's because it's of the soundtrack. Of time. It's not streams, it's album sales. Yeah, because it's yeah. more recent. Those are just oh you're yeah. Buying al- you're yeah buying who buys it. an album today? Yeah, who buys the album? Like who buys the album when you can listen to it on Spotify? Or you could just get the, the video. Or find the video. But it's like if you want to if you want the whole album, you can listen to the whole album on Spotify. And yeah. So do you think Pure Country? Which I've never heard of before is bigger than Purple Rain. Only because it's country. Oh, but I, I, would put, country. I would put Purple mean? Rain on there. I would put. I'm high. good with that. Was there a, was there a movie called Pure Country? Yeah, Obviously. I've never heard of it. I'm I'm so happy to know you, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> no one should have heard of it, but it was well, there. I mean, if you haven't even heard of it, how could it be top ten? Because we're not country fans. So maybe uh, maybe take Footloose off. And put what? Avita. No, I think Footloose is bigger, bigger than Avita. Yeah, I think Footloose is bigger than Avita too. The, the Footloose is massive. So this is 10. Yeah. You can call it whenever you want. Is this Footloose 1980s or Footloose 2000s? But, it's been well, remade. How horrible! Presumably, no, yeah. I the I think the most recent, all right, be on this list is from like ninety four or something like that. It's I think it might be Titanic actually, because of the yeah the movie soundtrack based on units sold as album yeah. I think Titanic was maybe ninety seven, maybe. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. Gee, that's an old movie now. That's scary. Oh, geez. My mom went and saw it. I remember that. She went with Jesus. I remember thinking how modern and new The Matrix was when I saw it. And now I look at how old it is. And I haven't seen it since God almost I went, came out. I went to see the second one in the series, and that convinced me not to see the third. <laughs> <laughs> is that bad? That was the right decision. You made yeah, the right decision. It was decision. just like, I watched it. I thought, eh, no, sorry. Just or more correctly, wait, there was a second Matrix movie. Yeah. yeah. Are we okay with this list? Because oh, yeah. we're not oh, getting better than that. this. Yeah. Did you, yeah, take, yeah, you, yeah. you took Pure Country off the list? Yeah, because replaced it with Purple Rain. You. Because everybody likes Prince better than Country. Yeah. No, but um, I, all right. Everybody I, would I, rather be wrong with Purple Rain than be right. With Rain. <laughs> yes, thank you. All right, I fine. don't want to admit that I've heard of this pure country. Is what, what was country? The movie? What it's was a it? George Strait movie. What George did they do? Strait. George Strait is in it. Yeah, that's what did right. What do? He sang. Oh, I didn't see it. I respect myself. He strutted. Everything. Well, in Footloose, there was a plot. Right, and it was a, mu- a plot about a town that wouldn't allow music and dancing. We'll yeah. look it up later, Susan. I'm sure Pure Country had a purported plot. A plot called Pure Country. No, they, they would have had a plot. I think I'm the sure. plot. I think, if I'm recalling correctly, the plot of Pure Country is that he was like a country singer trying to make it big or something like that. Oh wow! Really? What a plot! How did they sell that? I don't know, like <laughs> white people in boots, you know, like, come on. With a hat on. White people love that shit. <laughs> yeah, Alan, I think it might be time to call it. If he's on the list, I'm giving you 20 bucks. Call it, to call it, Brian. All right, calling it, I'm calling it. Yeah. All right, I got a picture of it, so I can actually read it this time. Good job, guys. Good job, team. That was a good discussion. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a great category. It is Avita. a great category. Brian. It really is. You'll good be job. sorry. It's a Vita. Alan, I owe you 20 bucks if it's on the list. 
All right. Well, it's on the list of 20, Peggy. Wait, wait, wait. You the list of 20 bucks is what? Pure country is on the list? I'm going to send him 20 bucks somehow. If, I don't know how. If pure country is not on the list, if it is on the list. No, no, no. This is all about Evita. Oh, Alvita. If Alvita is on the list. If Alvita is in the top 10, I Not Alvita. You're going to pay Paul. You're going to pay Paul. If it is, don't cry for me. I'm not crying. I'm just sending $20 to somebody. Don't cry for me either. Crying. Sorry. Yeah, the drawing's harder. I like the watercolor when you do painting because it's it's kind of, it's more uh, you have I fit for me I feel like you have more kind of like fluidity and it's more it's more calming so you don't have to focus on the little lines and everything. Yeah, it's much better conversation to be entering than some of the ones I've seen that I've come in here and it's about quantum mechanics or something. <laughs> no, because I, I what ha Susan I what happened was. Drawing. I have this better. class called advisory and it's theoretically a homeroom and they decided to inform us last night at 11 30 that our advisory class which is normally at like 12 45 was at 9 30 when I was in bed asleep and so I missed the class and a bunch of other people did and then they're calling the parents saying oh your kid missed class they're gonna get like in trouble or whatever it's like well it's not my fault you decided to remind us at 11 30 at night don't, don't send out messages at 11 you're supposed to be oh. asleep by then exactly yeah you're you're a healthy you're doing teenager. what you're supposed to yeah and then no one showed up to the class and then we yeah. get get marked on our attendance and then it's whole thing oh, yeah, and then the, you're at home where else uh, one person doesn't son, show up and it's their fault but if half the class doesn't show up then it's yeah yeah, yeah. right my son has a ton of absences and he does school right next to me. So I see he's there all day. And I'm yeah. like, why do you have so many absences? You're there, I, yeah. Shackling. And then they keep calling. They they keep, keep they send like text alerts to my mom and my dad. And then like, they have, I don't get back. anything. And then sometimes they don't, they had it a couple of times they didn't even change the thing. And so then the text alert kept sending because they never changed it in the system. <laughs> Nobody should be taking attendance numbers at this time. We're in a flipping pandemic and people have oh, it's to do with the safety thing. thing. <laughs> it's to do with the safety, but it's like I, I never, I'm never absent. It's either I forget. It's a very rarely I forget, or I actually have an appointment. Yeah, seriously. But, Come on, you guys. We've got. <laughs> yeah. We've got people who are failing classes, and I got no other's... notifications on that either. Yeah. yeah. And then so, I was well, like, I told better. the teacher, I was like, I don't why. I was like, you know, they sent the email at 11:30. He was like, what? I didn't know that. And I'm like, yeah. Brian, <laughs> you better get, jump in here. Mr. Country. Yeah, I was stunned that. Oh no! Oh many no! Many of you, many no. of you, haven't even heard of "Oh Brother, Where Art Thou." Never no, I did. We can never heard of it. I've heard of it. I didn't our, see our it. Team was like, it. Our team was like wondering because a, a half of our team has that as a as a, a soundtrack. soundtrack. It's a yeah. really love good it. movie. Love I love that. Odyssey. And I've only I, seen it once. I though. saw it because everybody was saying how great it was, and I thought it was really good. But they oversold it. I didn't think it was good. <laughs> yeah, that's they like the Book of Mormon. Well. Same thing. Oh, I love the Book of Mormon. Good. No. And, and Hamilton. Same thing. Susan, good. your cat is named Hamilton. No, but he was I, named Hamilton because Caspian named him Hamilton way before the the play, right? Caspian. Way before Hamilton was even president. No, no. <laughs> Caspian was a huge fan of Alexander Hamilton. Right, Caspian? Oh, I'm not even the there. I see an arm. I see, I see, I see someone up. I see an arm go like this. A thumb. Like it, the presidents went Washington, then Franklin, and then Hamilton. Yeah. And then George Jefferson. And then, yeah. <laughs> George. <laughs> I think they were good movies. What about George Harrison? Yeah, no, he was them too. <laughs> Hamilton was really good, and so was the Book of Mormon. But my God, everybody just went on and on and on. Oh, they were just Susan, I see my graduation time. cap after Hamilton. You are not allowed to insult Hamilton. Oh, well, sorry. Well, he was Hamilton before the movie. Or the okay. Do you guys want the list? Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Please. Read it slow. Don't go too fast. All right. Well, the aforementioned, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? is 10. Uh, hey. Number hey. nine, Top Gun. Yeah. Oh, hey. no. Ooh. Ooh. It's not looking good, guys. Number eight, Footloose. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Number seven, The Lion King. 
Yep. Number six, the Pride of Canada, Celine Dion and Titanic. Oh, okay. What the heck is the Pride of Canada? It's a bond dance, isn't it? The Pride of Canada? That was that. Number five, Dirty Dancing. Yep. Number four, Forrest Gump. Oh, no. No. Really? really? I told you guys. What the, the hell music was in Forrest Gump? What songs came out of Forrest Gump? What's that? What songs came out of Forrest Gump that are like what what was that song? American Pie? It was a greatest hits album. Of, oh my like, God, it was clarity. Great. Running oh, on empty. Yeah. Okay. Fortunate Son. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really There's a question stuff. I heard on my team, actually, whether or not Purple Rain was just an album that got a movie made after it or a movie that had a soundtrack called Purple Rain at number three. Wow. It was Purple Rain. Brian uh, kept it on good. Brian, did you say something before Forrest Gump? Because I missed. Dirty, Dirty Dancing? Dancing. I'll, I'll put it out in the chat too. So number two, Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. Number one. Blue Mermaid. Body Boy, Guard. That... Yep. No. Body Guard. Hey. Oh, Grease what? is on the list? What did you say, Avita? What did you say? Not on a list. No, he did not say Avita. <laughs> so here comes Peggy, the list. twenty bucks. And spend Greece is number eleven. What? Uh, wow. Greece is the word I heard. I I'm heard. still surprised. What about Flash Dance? So you you did give us the the top twenty and asked for I the top ten. I certainly did. I gave you the top twenty to make it at least a little hard. Oh my God, that was hard. Not bad, not bad. This is a really good bonus question though. That was good. Ryan. Surprised at number one. I thought that Saturday Night Fever was number one. Me too. People take note of how good this was a this category. Was good. I like this. Because he gave us the 20 and then we just had, that was very well done. People mm, paying yeah. attention what was to number bonus. one again? The Bodyguard. Bodyguard. The Bodyguard. We got that. Whitney, Whitney we got that. that. Yeah. And you will always remember that. <laughs> uh, oh. I, never I doubt it. it. I doubt it. I've never heard of it. <laughs> and the hit Whitney song, Houston in, 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 uh, the hit song I will um I will Dolly always Parker. love, love you. you. Written yeah. by Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Yeah. 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 And Bodyguard. Yeah. yeah. She wrote the song with Whitney. She Houston wrote the song. It. She made a ton of money on that album. Yeah, yeah. yeah, wasn't that the song that uh Colonel Parker or whatever wanted to get for Elvis and Dolly? Yeah, said no because yeah. she was she wasn't gonna lose she would lose control of it, but she yeah did it for Whitney Houston. Where was where's Pure Country on that list? Fourteen. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's close. Okay. Oh, this is the list here. Okay, I'm it was, like, but it was friend. a George Strait album, basically. Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. Right. Yeah, he was number one in country at the time. No one on my yeah. team even heard of the movie. I saw the movie and I thought I never heard it. Yeah. Uh, Alan, Alan, did you see where Evita was on this list? Well, I, 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 I'm dyslexic, so I do everything in the reverse order. It's number <laughs> one. Rob, was the movie, he was like a, a country artist who was trying to make it big or something like that? I can't, I don't think I've ever seen it. I know, I don't think so. I think he was like uh, just Mark a... Mark Strait's a really big country singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but he's definitely with the plot of the movie. I don't know, look it up on Wikipedia. It's been a long time since I watched it. I think he was just a guy who rolled into town and he, yeah. he uh, romances a woman there by singing the song to her in a country western bar. Oh, the like plot of every country. And country yeah, right. Western. There's an unusual yeah. theme. Yeah, yeah I, I would never have guessed that. Some guy sings to a woman in a country western bar and woos her. And then... Is there a dog involved? Uh, and a train? In a, 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 a pickup truck. Yeah. Yeah. Leonard, it wasn't porn, it was just a country film. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pickup truck. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, okay, so let's get our scores. Everybody get your scores together. Let's see. I'm going to work backwards here. Schrodinger's Cat Scratch Fever. Get eight. Eight. All right, uh, Earth Day finally joins AARP. Seven. Not good, you guys. The Weeping Angel Food Cake. Eight. Ooh. Good, good. We did not get eight. Pyramid UFOs for five years old. Seven. And not applicable. Eight. His name wow. in your country was Dusty Wyatt Chandler. Yeah, dusty. Of course it was. So I, I want that. you guys to know this is the 
our Why? 50th game. Wow. It's two oh, more. Makes a year. 50. No, it's not been a year because I did some you more Saturdays, than, right? you know, a couple times in a Thanksgiving <laughs> Saturdays. Yeah. So I don't think we're a year until June. Here's our, oh, I got the hiccups. It's June night. <laughs> oh, I remember now, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Dusty, he he was a country music star, and he thought it was like too too like fake and whatever. And he went out to find, you right. know, his his old kind of music or something like that. Yes, yeah. his pure country. Yeah. yeah. You guys see your scores? Forty-one. Yeah. Schrodinger's cat scratch fever, which <sighs> is Kevin, Avi, Brandy, Isabella, Carl, and Dave. Good going, cat. You guys really kicked up, kicked butt. Ooh, I'm yeah. just glad we were more than half of the winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be very embarrassing. Yeah, they finally the joined winner. the ARP. It was really close. And that is <sighs> um, Brian and Terry, Karen, Kelly, and Leonard. So I guess, wow. Good job. Some scary, people. scary. <laughs> you got well, it's it's always fun, though. So I will, I will put out the next week. Oh, my goodness. When, um, when your next opening for category. So who's next is, let me tell you. Hi. Um, Jim Newman, Mono, Deborah, and I have nobody for the fourth, and then I have a bonus is Mike Wolf. I can do four. Okay. I got to go. It's 1.30 in the morning here, as Kelly knows, yeah. wherever yes, she is. Good, good night, Terry. Good night, Terry. Good night. Oh, you guys lasted awesome. a long time. Susan, you yeah. might I have a backup just in case I have jury duty that day. Oh, I, I have a whole thing. You have a bunch of you Yeah, stuff, that right? I'm just sitting there. They're okay. growing old from in front of me. Oh, you don't want all these um, questions, but I I have to go too. I can't keep my eyes open long enough to keep that weeping angel. I'm surprised you managed to get the <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Bye bye. <laughs>